warga desa Saliguma, desa Madobak, dan desa Matotonan di Pulau Sibrut, Kepulauan Mentawai, Sumatera Barat, kini bisa menikmati listrik untuk pertama kalinya sejak Indonesia merdeka. Aliran listrik yang menerangi hidup mereka dihasilkan pembangkit listrik tenaga biomasa atau PLTBM berbahan bakar bambu. PLTBM berkapasitas total 700 kW tersebut menghasilkan listrik untuk 1.233 kepala keluarga. Setelah adanya listrik masuk di desa kami ini, kami boleh nonton TV dan juga kami bisa bekerja baik malam dengan kegiatan-kegiatan baik di e, pemerintah maupun di masyarakat setempat. Dan kami bersyukur dengan adanya penerangan di tempat ini, kami boleh meningkatkan segi perekonomian kami baik untuk hari ini maupun untuk hari-hari yang akan datang. Ah, dengan adanya listrik ini juga akan memotivasi masyarakat untuk meningkatkan taraf hidupnya untuk ke arah yang lebih baik. Potensi penghematan yang akan diperoleh dari PLTBM dibandingkan PLTD adalah 14 miliar rupiah per tahun. Dengan menggunakan bahan bakar e, bambu ini jauh lebih rendah dan kita Alhamdulillah di PL ini kita bisa menekan efisiensi 70% untuk biayanya dan dengan menggunakan bahan bakar e, EBT bambu ini. Masyarakat juga meningkat dengan adanya pembelian bambu dari kebun masyarakat setempat dan penyerapan tenaga kerja sebesar 2 miliar rupiah per tahun. Bambu mereka tanam atau yang mereka punya mereka jual ke PLN menghasilkan duit. PLN atau biomasa ini memproses menjadi lampu, menjadi uh, listrik, dikembalikan lagi kepada masyarakat. Minimal itu menjadi suatu manfaat yang sangat uh, berguna sekali. Selain tadi ada penghematan-penghematan uh, BBM fosil. Pembangunan tiga PLTBM ini mengusung konsep 3 in 1 development. Pertama, PLTBM menyediakan energi listrik untuk daerah yang sama sekali belum teraliri listrik. Dengan pembangunan pembangkit ini, Indonesia dapat menambah rasio elektrifikasi nasional. Kedua, PLTBM menjadi salah satu upaya pengembangan energi baru terbarukan atau EBT, khususnya tenaga biomasa yang masih belum banyak dikembangkan. Ketiga, pembangunan PLTBM ini juga bagian pembangunan daerah 3T atau tertinggal, terdepan, dan terluar. Ini adalah inovasi yang luar biasa karena akan mempercepat uh, proporsi energi terbarukan dalam komposisi bauran energi nasional. Yang tentunya kita harapkan tahun 2025 kita sudah mencapai 23 persen energi mix berasal dari energi terbarukan. PLTBM menjadi jawaban untuk memberikan akses listrik merata bagi masyarakat di salah satu gugus pulau terluar paling barat Indonesia yang sudah lama tidak menikmati listrik sejak Indonesia merdeka, seperti di Pulau Siberut.
Thank you. We begin. Uh, so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to um, today's parallel session to attend Embark 2022. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the second Global Bamboo and Rattan Congress. We are uh, here today uh, to help this uh, Bamboo and Rattan Entrepreneurs Forum, in which we are going to discuss about uh, sectoral clustering and green transition to boost international cooperation, innovation, and enhance the sharing benefits. This uh, session has three objectives. Bridging gaps in technology and personal, developing markets, and advanced trading. We are aiming to promote dialogue among bamboo entrepreneurs and international green finance, trade, and reach the goals of carbon neutrality globally together with our partners. Thirdly, we want to share and explore the best practices models for industrial market and trade development cooperation. We are targeting all the stakeholders from bamboo and rattan producing and consuming countries to pursue green finance, trade, and carbon neutrality. And I would like to thank all of you for being with us today. And uh, especially all our panelists. Today we have with us Mr. Jose Francisco Diaz Ulloa, the Charged Affairs of the Embassy of Colombia in Beijing. Thank you for being with us. We have with us Thank also you Mr. Yuto Tuse, First Consular at the Permanent Mission of Cameroon to the United Nations from Geneva. Welcome. Thank you, sir. And we will have the presentation of four case studies from uh, Mr. Jaya Wahono, the founder and CEO of Clean Power Indonesia, who joined us from Jakarta. Welcome. We also have Dr. Jimena Londoño, the president of the Colombian Bamboo Society. Welcome, Mrs. Jimena. Thank you, sir. We have also with us Mr. Lu Jiping, the general manager of Henda Bamboo Filler here in China. He's joining us online. And lastly, we have uh, the, the mayor, uh, the party secretary of the Qingsheng County, Mr. Liu Jinzhao. At the end, we will have a roundtable discussion. We also count with uh, with <clears throat> authorities from international organization, which I will uh, present. Mr. Rashid Amui, the commodity officer uh, of the commodity branch at the Division of International Trade and Commodities of UNCTAD. Welcome, Mr. Rashid. Thank you very we al much. We also have with, uh, with us Mr. Jan Jin Jiang, the Industrial Development Officer, Agro Industries and Skill Development Division at the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO. Welcome. Uh, we, uh, Mr. Juan Fachian, the Deputy Director General of the Department of Science and Technology of NFGA. Here in Welcome, Juan Ying. Mr. Zhang Xu Yan, the Secretary General of the China Society of Bamboo Industry. And lastly, we have Professor Wang Kan Liang, the, prof uh, the doc is doc professor and doctoral supervisor at Renmin Business School at the University of uh, Renmin University of China, and director of the Center for Metaverse Research. Welcome. Welcome all of you to this forum, and thank you for being part of it. We really appreciate it. Now, I would like to introduce our. Uh, we, I would like to begin with the opening ceremony and introduce our first uh, speaker who will uh, 
give the, his opening remarks. Mr. Jose Francisco Diaz Ulloa, the, the charge affairs at the Embassy on Colombia of Colombia here in Beijing. Dr. 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 Francisco Diaz, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Borja. Um, I'd like to check if you are listening to me well. Yes, we can listen. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, dear Mr. Juto, the TUS, first consular, uh, per, uh, the permanent mission of Cameroon to the United Nations. Dear Dr. Ximena Londoño, outstanding Colombian uh, scientist and researcher of bamboo, uh, distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by extending on behalf of Colombia, our heartfelt congratulations to IMBAR on its 25th anniversary since its establishment in Beijing, China in 1997. It is a great honor for me to be able to celebrate together with IMBAR and Chinese authorities, this important anniversary with the inauguration of this international seminar on bamboo and rattan clusters for regional development and green transition. It is also a great honor to me to address you on behalf of the IMBAR member countries to express our appreciation to the National Forestry and Grassland Innovation Alliance on Bamboo and Rattan Industry of China and the China Bamboo and Rattan Brand Cluster who provided this chance for us to sit with experts from different parts of the world and different fields of study to explore ways to foster bamboo and rattan-based industries and trade, making the effective tools for green transition in the developing world. Distinguished guests and participants, Colombia is the second country in Latin America after Brazil in bamboo diversity with 20 genera 106 species and four varieties. Colombia is recognized worldwide for the generation of knowledge around the native bamboo, Guadua angustifolia kunt. It is a pioneering country on the, in the structural use of bamboo and in the development of construction technologies and the only country in the Americas that has drawn up a series of quality standards for its cultivation, sustainability, management and use in construction, furniture, and pre- and industrialization. In January 2021, through resolution 009, the Guadua Bamboo Productive Chain and its agroindustry were formally recognized by the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development of Colombia. Today, there is a National Advisory Council made up of representatives from 11 departments, provinces in the Chinese case, and there is a technical secretariat. In addition, on May 17, 2022, law, the law 2206 or Guadua law was recently ratified through which the productive use of wild and bamboo and its environmental sustainability throughout the national territory are encouraged. This law is of great importance for the development of native and exotic bamboos in Colombia with an agro-industrial perspective and in order to contribute to peace in rural areas, especially now that our government is committed to reach the total peace in Colombia. We are aware that in this era of climate change, our guado bamboo is the main or one of the most relevant alternatives to mitigate it, as well to counteract environmental degradation, conserve water, soil, and biodiversity, and to generate work opportunities and provide economic benefits to the rural population. In Colombia, we recognize bamboo as an important resource that conserves the environment while at the same time, one that can largely help with our green growth and sustainable develop development. The Guadu bamboo is also in Colombia, a part of our history, of our culture and of our development. 
and it has inspired from names, names of towns like Walwas in the department of Cundinamarca, an old city founded in 1572 to famous Colombian songs like Los Guaduales, a melancholic tune that tells that the soul of the Guadua bamboo is alike to the human soul. Guadua bamboo has been as well a part of the traditional Colombian rural architecture since ancient times from the first native civilizations that populated the territory of our country. Thus, all this means that we are very proud of our Guadua and that our commitment goes even beyond economic or environmental purposes as we consider it as a part of our very national soul. I understand this seminar is part of the Bamboo Entrepreneurs Forum, which was, was initiated jointly by China and Inbar. It aims at bridging gaps in technology, personal markets and trade promoting dialogue among bamboo entrepreneurs and international green finance, trade and carbon neutralization institutes, sharing and exploring best practical models for industry, market and trade cooperation. As member countries, we hope this seminar will help the vast bamboo and rotten stakeholders who are fighting their way to realize the multiple values of the two resources to identify new mechanisms channels and opportunities to foster their businesses and make valid contributions to the sustainable development in their own countries or regions. For that purpose, Colombia will be delighted to continue working with INBAR and its Chinese partners to facilitate an already long-standing exchange and cooperation platform for bamboo and rattan industry, business and trade development, and the guarantee of its sustainability. Last but not the least, let me wish this seminar a full success. Thank you, Cecil. Thank you, Mr. Jose Diaz, Jose Francisco Diaz Ulloa, for your remarks. Indeed, the, the law of uh, the Wadwa law has been a game changer in Colombia. We really appreciate the efforts of the government of Colombia to pass this law last year, and also of Mrs. Jimena, which I know has been pursuing this for many years. So thank you also very, very much for her efforts uh, to support passing this law. Uh, we indeed agree with your, with your remarks. Uh, we have to continue to share and explore best practices uh, as well as uh, try to make the use of WADWA more productive in Colombia. And that, I think, uh, uh, in the last years, we have done a lot of progress. And I, I hope that with this, uh, the, the law that was passed, uh, I'm very hopeful that in the coming years that will be uh, finally realized. Thank you very much, Mr. Jose. You're welcome. Thank you very much. With that, I will go to our second uh, speaker from, for his opening remarks, Mr. Yuto Tuse, the first counselor uh, of Cameroon at the permanent mission of Cameroon to the United Nations in Geneva, an old friend of Imbar, and he used to be also our focal point uh, at the uh, from Cameroon. So we really appreciate always his presence uh, in these forums. And Mr. Yuto, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, General Moderator. Thank you, Bodia. I hope I'm audible. You are Mr. Yuto. Thank you. Thanks, Yuto. Thanks for the kind words. Uh, dear uh, Jose Francisco Diaz, Elias, Mr. Chalvet Affair, it's a pleasure that I'm meeting you for the first time. And I want to thank you for, for your kind words, as well as the commend the achievement of Colombia. In, in the areas of, of bamboo development. Uh, dear panelists, and I see we have a very rich panel today. I see Remina and many people that I know and some that are quite new for me. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
I first want again to extend our heartfelt appreciation, not only to Francisco Diaz, but also to Inba for organizing this event. It's the second, and we hope that it will not be the last, that it has been, it will therefore be a tradition. We, we attended the first back and it was quite informative, quite instructive. Since Cameroon became member of INBA in 2022, my country has been working actively with stakeholders, institutes, and international community to combine effort in promoting Bamboa Ratan as an effective tool, providing nature-based solutions for poverty alleviation, job creations, ecological services in some of the most remote rural areas, but as well as improving the beauty of the landscape in our cities, and also the housing. If it was the great pleasure that we saw in, uh, in back growing from nine to 49 state. And now I just heard yesterday from my colleague of DRC, which we are sharing in the same building, that DRC has pledged to be a member of INBA and I hope this will be effective very soon. Therefore, we, we can say that we are already 50 member countries if we count DRC. This has been an incre incredible growth of this organization. And I think in the past years, INBA has been most of the vibrant international organization in the world in the domain of sustainability. Through INBA network, countries and regions share knowledge and information, conduct exchange and cooperation with significant fosters bamboo that fosters, which significantly fostered bamboo and, info, and rattan resource development and application in various areas, such as smart houses, new energy, new fiber material, green food, medicinal products. And it, we can see it every day in shops, new products being placed, new products deriving from bamboo, which has been significantly useful to alleviate the pressures on deforestation and other areas as well. Bamboo today is one of the most consumed products in the world. And this has been thanks to the effort of INBA, but not only to the effort of INBA, but also to the spirit of Bamboo's actual stakeholders. I've personally witnessed that and I've personally experienced that. From the panel, Cameroon has benefited from most of those vibrant spirits, open spirit. I may quote Remina, I may quote Jingwe, I may quote many others, which I don't find today. And I think India has played a significant role in bringing people together, gathering those effort and knowledge and promoting the sharing of the knowledge. Today, Bambu and Ratan contributes to Cameroon National Development Strategy, which is uh, SND trend, notably through job creations, um, green economy, and the fight against poverty. We've also used bamboo today in terms of reforestation. Today, bamboo, bamboo is one of the main grasses and plants which we intend to use in not only on reforestation, but also on land um, restoration and reclaim the line and water uh, assessment. This increasing hold in the, has given the government more leverage to access the needs of people and also to afford the demand of our population. And we hope that from these sessions, and we through our cooperation with IMBA and other friendly institutions and country, our country shall be able to achieve its goals. Since 2019, as we all know, Cameroon is chairing the board of Cancer. And we have dedicated our effort in trying to make bamboo more known and more accessible also in Africa and around the world. The reason why we organize several net, uh, workshops in Africa, and we are very uh, uh, 
uh, I would say, uh, grateful for the support that we've received. And I really want to quote here the significant role that has played the regional office of INBA in Central Africa. I think it will, it will be due, due considerations to acknowledge that. And by acknowledging the role of this regional office, we therefore also acknowledge the role of the headquarters we supervise its efforts. We are very confident that Cameroon and African countries, the best in African government, and all members, uh, inbound member countries will definitely play a significant role in addressing the climate change challenge which we face nowadays. Cameroon hosted the first ever African Bamboo and Rattan Congress in April 2022. The Congress adopted a declaration, Yaoundé Declaration, which strives to make Bamboo and Rattan the fuel for the engine of resilient and sustainable green economy in Africa. The Yaoundé Declaration highlighted the determination of African ministers of INBA member state in achieving the goals set out in INBA's 2015-2030 strategic plans. We've also received special uh, and specific instructions from our capital that all diplomatic bishops should work ardently to promote bamboo. Reason why us in Geneva, the permanent mission in Geneva, in 2018, requested that UNTAD should take on board bamboo as one of the commodities uh, resources. And we are glad to announce that, and I think um, some other speakers may also uh, jump, on, jump in in this, that finally, UNTAD has released, just of recent, from last month, the first bamboo studies. And we really want to thank this achievement. For us, it's a, it's, it's a small but big step. This gives us an opportunity to get bamboo at the center of the studies and center of knowledge, center of corporations when it comes to UNTAD and other relevant UN bodies. Cameroon is committed to drive this, uh, uh, this, this, uh, this, this strength forward. And we are quite confident that in the coming years, we'll be able to get more members and to get bamboo being more visible within UN institutions. While China has host, as host of INBA has been pioneering leading and leading our effort to INBA and Rattan Innovative Technology and Sustainable Green. We also acknowledge the role that has played other um, INBA's member countries as well. And we are very cognizant of the significant effort that the government of China is putting to help other member countries to tap into these resources and build a win-win relationship across the board. I will not be long. Our profound expectations and conviction is that bamboo is a key resource that bamboo is not a panacea for sure, but bamboo has a great role to play in the new economy. And together we can achieve it. We are quite confident. You have seen that. And you can always count on Cameroon. You can count on Cameroon diplomacy. You can count on Cameroon resources to support INBA and to work together with all stakeholders to build this win-win cooperation with South-South base, as well as North-South, if need be. Thank you so much. Have a good session. Thank you very much uh, for your remarks, Mr. Yuto. I would uh, tap into a few aspects of your remarks, which I want to highlight. One is, uh, of course, the uh, acknowledgement of the efforts of the government of Cameroon to host the first African Bamboo and Rattan Congress, which took uh, place in, in Yaoundé, in Africa, and 
not only that, but the outcome of that uh, Congress, which was the Yaoundé Declaration, which sets a clear pathway for African countries, not only in Cameroon, but uh, Africa overall, no? uh, to uh, enhance the development, which will help to enhance the development of uh, the bamboo and rattan industries in uh, Africa. And uh, that we, of course, uh, appreciate the efforts that Cameroon uh, did to host it, as well as uh, the political commitment that it carries with it. Second, also uh, very important, I think it happened recently, a month, about a few weeks ago, uh, the acknowledgement, of course, by UNCTAD that we, uh, it has been working for almost a year uh, uh, of bamboo as a commodity resource within the work of the uh, commodities branch of UNCTAD. And of course, Cameroon also has played a role there. We also uh, appreciate that. So uh, those are, I think, two aspects that I would like to highlight due to, uh, we are running out of time, but I would like to appreciate once again the remarks by Mr. Yuto. With that, I will go to our first presentation of today. Uh, our first speaker who will provide us with a presentation is Mr. Jaya Wahono. He's the founder and CEO of Clean Power Indonesia. Uh, he is the founder of the Clean Power Indonesia company and Indonesia uh, 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 enterprise, which specializes in the development of community-based energy forests and utilization of biomass gasification technology for various applications. I will let him uh, continue with his presentation. Thank you very much for joining us. You have the floor, sir. Yeah, if I may, I just uh, do my slide presentation and then the video from your side. Is that okay? That is fine, yes, no problem. Okay, okay, very good. All right, so I was gonna uh, do the share screen, but it was already done from your side. Okay, anyway, um, uh, again, my name is Jaya Wahono from Clean Power Indonesia. We're doing the um, independent power producer uh, from bamboo, and then we sell electricity to the uh, uh, state utility company in Indonesia. Uh, the reason why we uh, want to focus on energy, because Indonesia, as you know, is a big uh, archipelago country. We have 17,000 islands all over Indonesia, uh, about 9,000 uh, are inhabited. And there are many islands, especially small islands and also all the uh, uh, regions in the eastern part of Indonesia do not have reliable electricity yet. Many of the people still uh, experiencing uh, energy poverty there. Um, and there are consequences with the energy poverty. Uh, we cannot develop the area. Uh, uh, many of the rural Indonesia uh, have a um, uh, level of uh, electricity access uh, with uh, sub-Saharan Africa, even though that the um, uh, uh, Java Island, which is the, uh, the big uh, uh, population center in Indonesia, as probably already around uh, 2,000 kilowatt hour per capita per year, which is uh, still lower than Th Thailand and Malaysia, but it's already uh, above uh, many uh, 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 underdeveloped uh, countries. So uh, we are focusing on how we can uh, give uh, better access to uh, these small islands uh, and also underdeveloped regions. So the reason why we cannot uh, uh, develop the uh, electricity consumption uh, uh, as uh, good as in Java, because many of the island uh, get electricity from diesel fuel. The PLN or the state utility uh, company in Indonesia uh, rely on diesel fuel that need to be transported uh, from uh, Java to all these small islands. It costs them uh, a lot, which is around 30 to 40 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, uh, and, and they just sell it to the population for three cents. So the, the, the government uh, subsidized heavily uh, with this diesel uh, uh, genset um, uh, for this uh, electricity generation. So if we have uh, switched this diesel gensets to the local renewable energy source, it can be hybrid of a biomass with a small hydro or solar PV, then uh, we, we think we can uh, cut the cost down to 12 to 15 cents per kilowatt hour. So it's a, this is a business case for us. And there are many 
of the community all over Indonesia then can um, uh, benefit from this uh, new investment. Uh, the, but the way in Indonesia, we need to go uh, several layers. Uh, the community uh, owns the land, but uh, we feel that uh, we, we have to bring the, uh, 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 the role of the local government uh, to be the aggregator of this uh, uh, biomass. And then they sell it to us through their uh, 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 regional co company. Uh, so we can uh, guarantee the uh, sale of electricity to the state owned utility company for 25 years. Uh, and then uh, the uh, state utility company send it back to the community. So that way the community gets the benefit from both sides. We buy the uh, bamboo uh, from them and then the state utility company uh, uh, deliver the electricity to, to them with subsidized tariff. So in our experience, the community doesn't need to pay electricity anymore from out-of-pocket money because it's at par. The money that they receive from us, uh, it's the same uh, amount that they need to pay for electricity bill every month. This is the the pilot project that we built in uh, Mentawai Island, uh, which is already inaugurated by the uh, Minister of uh, National Planning Agency and Indonesian government want to replicate this all over Indonesia. Um, and, and the Ministry of Finance uh, just set up a, a new agency, it's called Indonesia Environmental Fund. Now it's already have a 1.5 billion US dollar uh, to distribute among uh, bamboo farmers and also to uh, incentivize the state-owned utility company. Uh, but Ministry of Finance of Republic of Indonesia wants this uh, new Indonesia Environmental Fund as, um, as uh, a blended financing platform. Uh, and they uh, already got money also from Norwegian government, uh, about uh, 60 million US dollar uh, every year uh, from Redless. Uh, and uh, they also receive money from World Bank. Uh, now there's a talk uh, among uh, Indonesia, Brazil, and the Democratic uh, uh, Republic of Congo to become uh, OPEC of rainforest. So that will uh, uh, give uh, more leverage to us uh, to, to become a carbon sink of the world. Uh, we already uh, uh, wrote this lesson learned with C4 uh, based in Bogor. They are the forestry think tank. Uh, uh, and they, uh, they just uh, launched this book, Bioenergy for Landscape Restoration and Livelihood, uh, in the World Forestry Congress uh, back in April uh, in Korea, and now become uh, more like a uh, more or less like a, a bioenergy uh, guidelines uh, for uh, developing countries. Um, uh, C4 recognized there are three species for bioenergy and landscape restoration. In Indonesia, there's a, a tamanu tree, tree that will produce uh, uh, oil uh, uh, for biofuel, and then pongamia tree also for restoration, and then also, of course, bamboo, uh, it, which is a very good uh, potential for land restoration and energy production because it's easy to grow, uh, have a, a lot of function uh, for the uh, community. Uh, it's native to Indonesia. We have 20, uh, sorry, 200 uh, endemic species in Indonesia for bamboo. So, uh, and, and local community uh, are familiar with bamboo already. And with bioenergy and restoration, then it will bring a, a private sector investment into this uh, land restoration. The impact uh, that we uh, estimate, uh, it's very big. There are about 25,000 villages all over Indonesia that do not have uh, reliable and equitable electricity uh, yet that can be improved. So we are elevating poverty. At the same time, we uh, uh, restore degraded land. There are about 14 million hectares of degraded land all over Indonesia um, that, that need to be restored. And then the, uh, about 2,000 to 4,000 megawatts of uh, diesel genset that can be replaced. So it will require a huge investment. Uh, we already identify about 500 megawatt of uh, uh, diesel genset that can be uh, replaced right away. It will require $1.5 billion new investment, but it will create jobs around 320,000 uh, uh, local jobs, uh, empowering 1 million uh, poor household and restoring about 1 million hectare of degraded land. So the, the, the benefits are uh, 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 huge, and it's not only for energy transition, 
but also uh, addressing energy poverty, energy security, and helping uh, us to become a carbon sink for the world. Uh, this is all the location that we already identified. We already proposed to the government to, to do this uh, within five to uh, seven years um, in order for the government to achieve the NDC target. Uh, lastly, uh, we, we are going to uh, also present this uh, concept in G20 summit next week. Uh, of course, the president of China will be attending uh, the summit uh, along with other uh, Western leaders, uh, Japanese leader, uh, and the other uh, 20 uh, governments uh, all over uh, the world. And uh, we are focusing on three things. Uh, why we need to uh, grow bamboo for bioenergy and landscape restoration. It will create jobs, uh, many of local jobs. And then we we also going to achieve energy self-sufficiency, not only in Java, but also all over uh, Indonesia. And then uh, we think uh, the government also want to make sure that we will have a, a stable uh, cost of energy uh, now and in the future, which is a big, a uh, big uh, agenda uh, uh, among all the governments around the world right now, especially developing countries. And I think bamboo will play an important role in that. Now, uh, I'll leave back to, to you uh, to uh, play the uh, video. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you much. have the video? Yeah. yeah, please play the video. Warga desa Saliguma, desa Madobak, dan desa Matotonan di Pulau Sibrut, Kepulauan Mentawai, Sumatera Barat, kini bisa menikmati listrik untuk pertama kalinya sejak Indonesia merdeka. Aliran listrik yang menerangi hidup mereka dihasilkan pembangkit listrik tenaga biomasa atau PLTBM berbahan bakar bambu. PLTBM berkapasitas total 700 kW tersebut menghasilkan listrik untuk 1.233 kepala keluarga. Setelah adanya listrik masuk di desa kami ini, kami boleh nonton TV dan juga kami bisa bekerja baik malam dengan kegiatan-kegiatan baik di e, pemerintah maupun di masyarakat setempat. Dan kami bersyukur dengan adanya penerangan di tempat ini, kami boleh meningkatkan segi perekonomian kami, baik untuk hari ini maupun untuk hari-hari akan datang. Ah, dengan adanya listrik ini juga akan memotivasi masyarakat untuk meningkatkan tarap hidupnya untuk cara yang lebih baik. Potensi penghematan yang akan diperoleh dari PLTBM dibandingkan PLTD adalah 14 miliar rupiah per tahun. Dengan menggunakan bahan bakar e, bambu ini jauh lebih rendah dan kita Alhamdulillah dari PLE ini kita bisa menekan efisiensi 70% untuk biayanya dan dengan menggunakan bahan bakar e, EBT bambu ini. Selain penghematan, pendapatan masyarakat juga meningkat dengan adanya pembelian bambu dari kebun masyarakat setempat dan penyerapan tenaga kerja sebesar 2 miliar rupiah per tahun. Bambu mereka tanam atau yang mereka punya, mereka jual ke PLN menghasilkan duit. PLN atau biomasa ini memproses menjadi lampu, menjadi uh, listrik, dikembalikan lagi kepada masyarakat, minimal itu menjadi suatu manfaat yang sangat uh, berguna sekali. Selain tadi ada penghematan-penghematan uh, BBM fosil. Pembangunan tiga PLTBM ini mengusung konsep 3-in-1 development. Pertama, PLTBM menyediakan energi listrik untuk daerah yang sama sekali belum teraliri listrik. Dengan pembangunan pembangkit ini, Indonesia dapat menambah rasio elektrifikasi nasional. Kedua, PLTBM menjadi salah satu upaya pengembangan energi baru terbarukan atau EBT, khususnya tenaga biomasa yang masih belum banyak dikembangkan. Ketiga, pembangunan PLTBM ini juga bagian pembangunan daerah 3T atau 3T. 
tertinggal, terdepan, dan terluar. Ini adalah inovasi yang luar biasa karena akan mempercepat uh, proporsi energi terbarukan dalam komposisi bauran energi nasional. Yang tentunya kita harapkan tahun 2025 kita sudah mencapai 23 persen energi mix berasal dari energi terbarukan. PLTBM menjadi jawaban untuk memberikan akses listrik merata bagi masyarakat di salah satu gugus pulau terluar paling barat Indonesia yang sudah lama tidak menikmati listrik sejak Indonesia merdeka, seperti di Pulau Siberut. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Wahono. Sorry, apologies there. There is some problem with the sound of the video, so we cannot play. Yeah. Fully. Apologies for that. Um, thank you very much for your for your presentation and the video. Also, we highlight some opportunities there uh, uh, from your from your presentation. Opportunities on land restoration and uh, on bioenergy production. Uh, also, the benefits that uh, this can uh, give for energy security, energy transition, as well as energy security, uh, 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 alleviating energy poverty, no? while it enhances job creation. No? I think this is very important. Thank you very much for that. We take note of all these uh, developments in Indonesia. And uh, I would like to uh, give the floor to our next speaker, uh, Mrs. Jimena Londoño. She will present us today the Bamboo and Guadua Paradise, an integral model of ecotourism, agriculture, and innovation with bamboo for Colombia. Mrs. Jimena, you have the floor. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I appreciate very much the invitation to participate in this panel. Uh, we, uh, I have to record the presentation because uh, I have bad connection. So if you can help me with the uh, record presentation, please, I will appreciate. Please play the recorded presentation. Thank you. Good evening, Good evening everybody. everybody. I want to thank Imba for inviting me to participate in this parallel session about working together for inclusive and green development. My name is I am from Colombia and I'm going to talk about the Bamboo and Guadua Paradise, an integral model of ecotourism, agriculture and innovation with bamboo for Colombia. It is located in the Department of Quindío, Municipality of Montenegro, in the central western part of Colombia at 1,250 meters above sea level. The Bamboo and Guadua Paradise is a company devoted to convene a life passion for bamboos through environmental educative tours, training workshops, bamboo agriculture, research and innovation. It is unique in America. What it offers? Educational tours. We educate the local, national, and foreign visitors on the environmental, economic, social, and cultural benefits of Guadua Bamboo. We sensitize the new generations about the socioeconomic and environmental potential of bamboo and promoting new dynamics of association through contributing to the peace process in Colombia. We receive elementary school and high school, and also we receive students from private and public universities. The Bamboo and Guadua Paradise collaborate with researchers and experts and carry out investigations looking for bamboo knowledge and technologies and bamboo innovations. We have collaboration with the National University of Colombia in construction system. We have collaboration with the Pontificia Universidad Javeriana in phytochemistry of Guadua. We have with the Technological University of Pereira collaboration in silviculture of bamboo and guadua, with Iowa State University in bamboo taxonomy, and with the University of Bayer in social house construction system. 
We have the largest collection of lowland tropical bamboos in South America after Brazil with 19 species. Some of the species here are endemic for Colombia, like guadua in Cana, and also guadua angustifolia, the most important bamboo in South America for construction purposes. In this German plant ban, we are able to follow bamboo flowering cycle of exotic and native bamboos. We have flowering from bambusa longispiculata, guadua superba, otatea colombiana, chusquea liennani, and bambusa polymorpha. We receive inners from international and national universities playing the role of a private research center for bamboo development, scientific researchers, technology transfer, and international training. We receive students from French, from Brazil, and from different universities of Colombia. We offer workshops covering several bamboo aspects, construction, bamboo biology, preservation, and handicraft. We also established demonstration sites. As a bamboo leader, we decide to start innovative crops and establish a small scale demonstration site with exotic bamboo. For example, cultivation and management of bamboo plantation for food purposes as a human food. Establishment and management of Melocana vasifera, a bamboo from India, for raw material supply. The cultivation of bamboo shoot in the Bamboo and Guadua Paradise is established within the strategies of struggle that civil society has waged against the Ministry of Environment for more than 25 years to change an absurd legislation that considered bamboos as a protect forest resource and did not allow his easy exploitation and transformation into useful goods. On January 25 of last year, through resolution 009 signed by the Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Rodolfo Sea, the Guadua Bamboo productive chain and his agro-industry were finally recognized. On May 70 of this year, Congress and the President approved Law 2206 or Guadua Law, through which the productive use of Guadua and bamboo and his environmental sustainability in the national territory are encouraged. Colombia finally opened his door with the new law to invest in sustainable, green, and inclusive development of guadua and bamboo through his national territory. Bamboo shoot plantations are difficult to commercialize because in Colombia, we don't have the custom to eat bamboo in the gastronomic diet. We need to educate the consumer. We need to publicize the product in restaurants specializing in Asian, vegetarian, and healthy food. We, during three years, finally developed and strained the alliance with an Asian restaurant in Bogota, and now they, pro they buy all the production. 35% of the lands of the Bamboo and Guadua Paradise are now cultivated with guadua or bamboo for different purposes. For bamboo shoot, we have two hectares. For bamboo poles, we have 1.5 hectares. And for, for conservation of water source and biodiversity, we have 2.2 hectares. The environmental benefits during the last 20 years of a green development agriculture are represent an increase of biodiversity, flora and fauna. We survey 150 bird species, six amphibian species, 12 reptile species, and 10 mammal species. Also, we produce four liters per second of water from a small creek and an amount of 98.6 ton of CO2 per year are neutralized in the 5.7 hectares that has been transformed and cultivated with bamboo. 
This is the land and in the red square there is the bamboo crops and in the circle, blue circle, are the bamboo for conservation. Some of the biodiversity we can point out are the nocturnal monkey, Aotus jorgernandesis. The jaguarundi is a small puma that uh, occupy our territory. Also, we have several bird species like the owl, Pulsatris persicillata, Momotus equatorialis, and this uh, uh, water bear called Aramitis cajeneus. Also, the mammals, Potos flavus, and the tortoise Chelidra acutirostris. We have a wetland what we, that we transform in a small creek. This small creek is a, a, a transformation using bamboo as a bioremediation, and now we produce close of five liters per second, and it's a model and inspiration for the visitors to restore wetland and make more productive in the aspect of environmental benefits. The Bamboo and Guadua Paradise financial sustainability is based on income from agricultural crops, banana represent 45%, coffee 5%, and bamboo shoots 2%. Income from educational tourists and training workshop 40%, sales from the bamboo nursery 6%, technical assistance 2% and the profitability of the company has been 6%. I want to mention successes and failures during the eight years of the Bamboo and Guadua Paradise activities. Successes, business model with a triple impact strategy, social, environmental and economic, where innovation plus entrepreneurship plus sustainability plus science are combined. There is an integrated vision of bamboo. His manager is a woman convinced that a fairer, more balanced, more equitable, and more sustainable world can be co-created with bamboo. Some of the failures are little investment capital and fear of external financing, lack of rapprochement with the state institution, and lack of better strategic alliance. In conclusion, the Bamboo and Guado Paradise, through education, research, and innovation, contribute to guide the development of bamboo sector in Colombia and Latin America. In the Bamboo and Guado Paradise, we bet on a green economy with bamboo. We resisted and reinvent ourselves in the face of the current vicissitudes of climate change and the pandemic. Our passion for bamboo has been able to overcome the existing imbalance between financial and environmental commitment. In countries like Colombia, working together for inclusive and green development with bamboo may contribute to achieve peace and alleviate poverty. I want to thank everybody for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, very much, Mrs. Jimena, for your powerful presentation. And uh, of course, many of us here are thinking of uh, the next opportunity to visit the Mambu and Wadua Paradise. Thank you very much. You. That's uh, awesome. Uh, I, I want to highlight some uh, some uh, takeaways from your presentation. Uh, of course, the environmental benefits of bamboo uh, are undoubtable. And also the, 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 this business model that you have uh, consolidated in, uh, in the last eight years, uh, I think it's uh, a model that can be replicated, of course. And uh, while also uh, it is uh, an example no, for for many of us who work in this sector, uh, to see a person like you who's so passionate about, about uh, the benefits and the, the impact that bamboo can bring to the society. Uh, I really, really appreciate such a powerful presentation. I uh, admire you and thank you very much for, 
for this great uh, exposition. Thank uh, you, Borja. With that, I would like to, uh, where, uh, for the for time purposes, I will go to our next uh, present <clears throat> our next presentation uh, from Mr. Lu Jiping, the general manager of Hengda Bamboo Filler. He will present us with innovation originating from ingenuity, replacing plastics with bamboo, accelerating green and low carbon transformation. Mr. Lu Jiping, you have the floor. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, dear My name is Jaya Excellencies, Wano. dear experts, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are a company good afternoon. that is based it's in It's a great pleasure to be invited to attend this good afternoon, uh, session. Everyone. I would like to My thank Inbar for giving me this opportunity uh, we are to a talk company with you about the future of the bamboo industry. For me, the topic I'm going to address today is how we can use bamboo to use plastics to drive the transformation towards uh, green and low carbon. I will three, first talk about how bamboos are playing roles in China's rural revitalization program. Secondly, I will talk about the experiments we've done with bamboos to replace plastics. Thirdly, I will talk about my company a little bit, what we've been doing since we were founded 17 years ago. Uh, our company, of course, is an environmental company. We were uh, founded in 1989. Our total area is 28,600 square meters. Floor area is 23,000 square meters. Our specialty was in uh, equipment manufacturing for water treatment. However, in 2002, we started R&D on bamboos as fillers to replace plastics. So in 2006, we uh, established a subsidiary uh, in and we uh, bought a lot of bamboo plantations to buy bamboo uh, poles uh, and we have set up a ecological park. Now, uh, I would like to invite you to watch a video to see how we are using bamboos as fillers in construction. Uh, this material can be used Interiorly, in a water cooler, in a number of settings, including power generation, petrochemical, petrochemistry uh, plants, they have very large towers for cooling purposes. So they need uh, materials uh, for a cooling tower. It's uh, based on the circulation of air, the feeders can uh, slow down the air movement to extend the time for heat exchange to maximize the effect of cooling. So the bamboo feeders are constructed in this structure, forming a grid to achieve this purpose. It offers numerous advantages compared with other materials. It's less resistant and its cooling effect is much stronger. It uses 35 to 50 millimeter uh, to build this great structure. So with this kind of uh, arrangement, uh, we can uh, we can form uh, these small droplets between each layer. So the chilling or the cooling effect is very good. And secondly, the, dur the durability or the life cycle is very long. And uh, during the utilization, this bamboo filler does not need the frequent maintenance 
and our filler is made of a muscle bamboo. It is very strong, and it is well against um, different pressure. And also, um, so this filler is very convenient to be maintained because it's very durable and strong. And this is um, the uh, this is the construction of the bamboo fillers. You can see the workers can even walk on that. Also, uh, for the construction, you can just put them on the coolers, so it is very easy. And the bamboo is very soft, so the bamboo will not be easily destroyed or deformed because of the installation and also the transportation. Also, these bamboo fillers have a strong capability to resist against the erosion. It likes water and oil. It has a strong capability to be against the erosion. And the fifth, the bamboo fillers um, can be against the aging. And uh, so during its utilization, it will not be um, aged very easy. It can be used for 50 or 60 years. And during the um, utilization, no um, slurry, no sludge or um, the sand can be settled in the middle of a different kind of uh, layers of uh, the filler. So it, it is very clean. And also it is very environment friendly and the cost is very low. Bamboos are renewable resources and the re the regeneration phase is about the six to it's about five to six years. So the logging of the bamboos will exert no negative impact on the environment. And the processing process will also not generate any kind of negative impact on the environment. So it is very clean and eco-friendly. Also, the bamboo chips is designed in this half circle shape, therefore it can better um, release the heat. Therefore, the cooling effect will be very good. We have the credibility and we pursue quality and brand. And currently, well, the echo system is having profound changes. So the world and the Chinese economies are interacting and also with um, the support of different capitals. We are now trying to come up with the good products in order to better con conserve and protect the local environment. So we were working hard towards our dream and the future. So in China, before 1959, there's no self-designed and manufactured cooling towers. All the cooling towers used before 1958 were imported from Japan and Germany. In 1959, a cooling tower was imported from Germany, and it was these assembled by the first chemical design and research institute at Meishan Pyre in Nanjing, Jiangsu province. It was found that the cooling tower and the fitter were made of wood, including the internal structure of the shell. However, wood fitter can only last for one or two years before rotting. In 1970, China replaced the wood filler with a cement grade filler. In 1980s, Acetylene projects developed steadily in China. In 1983, plastic filler was popularized in China, replacing cement grade filler. So this is the first part of my presentation today. Second, the bamboo filler is an exemplary incarnation of the initiative on bamboo as a substitute for plastic. China's bamboo sector is booming in the tide of economic development. However, the rich bamboo resources have yet to be fully tapped, and the potential needs to be further developed. Now the bamboo filler emerges at the right moment to replace plastic filler 
uh, for the power plants and steel plants. It is now a sunrise industry. On 24th June 2022, the high-level dialogue on global development was held during the 14th BRICS summit. The dialogue was chaired by President Xi Jinping and attended by leaders of BRICS countries, including Russia, India, South Africa, Brazil. At the dialogue, President Xi Jinping made the initiative of ensuring harmony between human and nature. To achieve this goal, the transformation of development towards green and low carbon shall be accelerated and climate adaptation shall be strengthened to meet people's needs for a beautiful ecological environment and achieve high quality and more sustainable development. Among the deliverables of the high level dialogue, the 18th item is that China will jointly launch the bamboo as a substitute for plastic initiative with International Bamboo and Rotten Organization to reduce plastic pollution to address climate change, which indicates that the bamboo filler, whose emergence goes with the trend of the times, will soon become a popular green and low carbon product across the world and contribute to global energy conservation and carbon emission reduction. Mosul bamboo is green, low carbon, and eco-friendly. It can create more carbon sink quota for enterprises. So uh, with plastic fillers, every year it emits about 6 million tons of CO2, but with bamboo fillers, every year it can absorb more than 200 tons of CO2. So you can see this is the comparison of the functions of the plastic and the bamboo fillers. Bamboo fillers can absorb carbon instead of emit carbon. And also we can see that, um, um, so bamboo, its carbon sequestration is very strong, even stronger than the uh, woods. So, so you can, let's, Let's watch this program. So why the bamboos can absorb the uh, carbon? So it is because of the organic element of the bamboo. So uh, the carbon sequestration of a bamboos, according to our research of more than 20 years, in subtropical region ranks number one. Um, I want to make a comparison. So it is 1.2 times of that of a poplar, 1.3 times that of a fir, and 3.9 times that of a pine. That is um, the carbon sequestration capability of a mosul bamboo is even stronger than that of poplar, fir, and a pine. And uh, how do you know that? So we have, uh, we can measure the carbon directly, that is in one day, how many carbons this plant absorbs. And, and we, we have the most, most scientific method to measure that. And what is the research results? And with our measurement, and uh, we can conclude that uh, for one move of uh, carbons, it can offset the emissions of for 1.5 vehicles for one year. Um, so um, for 40 pieces of muzzle bamboo, it can absorb or offset the carbon emitted of one individual for one year. So you can see um, we need the whole society and uh, we, we needed to have the low carbon lifestyle. Although in our daily life, bamboos can play a, a very strong role in terms of the carbon sequestration. 
For more than a decade, bamboo fillers has been widely used in the north of the Yangtze River, especially in the private power plants located in um, the Shandong, Hebei in Mongolia and Heilongjiang and has been well recognized at the present under the guidance of the International Center for Bamboo and Rattan, bamboo fillers is gradually stepping into um, such corporations under China's power system and uh, the metallurgical system as China Huadian Group, China Huanan, and Aluminum Corporation of China and China Metallurgical Group Corporation that are becoming the main force of the efforts to promote bamboo as a substitute for plastics. So let us look at an example. This is uh, the Zuping power plant in Shandong. Um, there are six cooling towers with the power of 300 megawatts and two with 600 megawatts. And so um, you can see that, um, uh, so if we have um, the recycled um, uh, uh, bamboo uh, fillers, it can generate an economic benefits of more than 100 billion RMB, and it can absorb 160,000 tons of CO2. This is uh, uh, the bamboo filler. It can generate huge social benefits. So now um, I would like to talk about our development process in the past 17 years. In 2017, bamboo feather was listed in a catalog of national key energy saving and low carbon products for promotion by NDRC. In 2016, we got the verification report and we also passed the relevant verification and a test in terms of the energy efficiency. And this is the certificate for us and to get a, a national project. In 2014, we were honored to be invited to participate in the standard development for the bamboo filler in the electric power industry. And in 2016, it passed the Science and Technology Achievement Identification Award by the China Electricity Council. In 2017, we won China Electricity Innovation Award. In 2018, we were among the first members of the China Bamboo and Rattan brand cluster. For also, we have obtained one national in, in invention patent. And also five national patents for utility model. And our company has also had the ISO 9001, 14001, and ISO 45001 certification. So bamboo is an excellent resource with the greatest development potential in the 21st century. It grows fast, it is renewable and degradable and recyclable. It is natural green and low carbon. Lusted waters and lush mountains are invaluable assets. We would like to bring the bamboo into the valuable resources so that uh, we can make the industry greener and create more value for the farmers. Thank you very much. That is my presentation today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Lu Juping, for your presentation, particularly for sharing your experience on developing the technology of the cooling towers, which I think is very interesting. When I first heard about it, I was so impressed. Thank you very much. And uh, also, I think this will be, of course, uh, under the framework of the bamboo as a substitute uh, of plastics initiative, which I think uh, is a, a remarkable thing from this Congress. So thank you for your uh, kind inputs. And uh, we take note of all these developments. With that, 
uh, I will proceed to our last presentation today. Our last presentation today is uh, by Mrs. Uh, Wang Hongying, the Vice Mayor of the Qingshen County. She's coming uh, in, <clears throat> she is going to be uh, presenting the future bamboo industry development in Qingshen County, Sichuan Province. Mrs. Wang, you have the, you have the floor. Nihong, Mrs. Wang. Wang Hoying. Wang. Wang Hoying. Wang Hoying. Wang Hoying. Wang Hoying. Wang Hoying. Wang uh, Ms. Wang, can you hear me? Uh, are you online with us? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Mrs. Wang, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Madam, you may start your presentation. Uh, I'm waiting for the screen share to come online. Uh, dear uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm from uh, Sichuan province, Meishan city, Qingshan county. I'm the deputy mayor. I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my county's experience I will talk about how we are developing the bamboo industry in our county. Why is this county has a role to play in this regard. Qingsheng County is named after an ancient king in the Sichuan area. It's close to Chengdu and Chongqing, the two mega cities. Our population is 200,000. Our size is 386 uh, square kilometers. Uh, the very famous ancient poet, Su Dongpo, was a native of our county. He said something very famous about bamboos. He wrote a poem about bamboos, saying that uh, he'd rather eat without meat, but he would not uh, tolerate a living condition without bamboos. So there is a long tradition of uh, using bamboos in this county and it's become part and parcel of our lives. It's also an art creation. And in 2008, the bamboo weaving in my county was listed as a national level intangible cultural asset. This is uh, made from bamboos, weaving bamboos, featuring panda. Uh, its length is 1.6 meters and width uh, 70 centimeters. It uses 12,000 very thin bamboo shreds to weave into this pattern. It fetches a very high price on the market. It sells for 40,000 RMB. This is um, paper tissue made from our bamboo in the county. Uh, it's a natural color. It, uh, it's a smart share is 30%. Uh, Non-colored uh, tissue, 30% uh, of the market is occupied by the products from our county. It has passed the certification for uh, safety in the United States, as well as in Germany. Uh, here at the Beijing Winter Olympics, uh, there was a ritual in which uh, Chinese leaders and foreign leaders uh, planted the trees and they watered the trees they planted and the water bucket is made from the bamboo, uh, made from the bamboo we grow, grow in Qingsheng County. Here, uh, we 
have lots of bamboo forests which are turned into parks. We have a dozen of bamboo parks. They are very vibrant green with a very uh, beautiful size, attracting lots of uh, tourists and local people. This is a bamboo trade expo we have been organizing for the last three years, attracting participants from over 60 countries, marketing our products internationally. Through bamboo weaving, bamboo paper tissue, and bamboo forest parks, and many other bamboo products, we are achieving greater success commercially with bamboos. Uh, in 2011, the revenue from the bamboo industry in the county was 65 million RMB. Now it's increased to 6.7 billion RMB. We only have 0.5% of the bamboo forest in terms of size of the province. However, we contribute to 7% of the bamboo industry revenue in the province. And we hope to achieve 10 billion RMB in revenue for bamboo industry by 2023. Using the 17 SDG goals as an indication and also under the guidance of INBAR, we are doing a lot of things properly. So why are we able to uh, achieve this success? I think there are two key reasons. First, uh, make it locally relevant. As I mentioned, in the county, we celebrate a long tradition of planting, using, appreciating bamboos. This is from the ancient times. So we have a strong culture of bamboo. And uh, also the bamboo from the county is quite unique. It has very long fibers, very suitable for making bamboo woven products and bamboo paper. In 2018, President Xi Jinping visited Sichuan province. He gave the instruction for Sichuan to develop the bamboo industry, given its large reserve of bamboo forests. And Qingshan County followed that instruction very closely. And we make bamboo a unique pillar industry of our local economy. The second reason why we are able to achieve with the great success is that we have the enabling support of INBAR and the International Center of Bamboos and Rattans, and also the international trend of carbon initiatives gave us uh, very enabling conditions. And we plan to further uh, to see this momentum and we are thinking of planning. Uh, in 2012, Qingshan County already made a plan for developing its uh, bamboo weaving sector, and it was approved by the Sichuan provincial government. And uh, this gave us a new round of uh, energy and momentum for us to develop the bamboo industry. And following that, we have uh, planned for very large bamboo forests uh, plantations. And uh, also we have developed a bamboo healthy uh, park. And um, we make sure that these parks, these facilities are equipped with enough funding and uh, human resources, uh, securing public policy support so far. Uh, the land has already been uh, allocated. 1,800 moves of land have been allocated for developing these bamboo plantations and the parks. Uh, the investment is already 4.5 billion RMB. Uh, it's been used to build a bamboo art craft museum and a bamboo industry exhibition center. And another initiative is that we support the bamboo related businesses, help them develop their brands, accessing domestic and international markets. Sichuan Huan Nong, Yun Zhu Huan, 
are two local companies that are considered to be national champions in the bamboo industry. And they have their suppliers. They also have their downstream players. Altogether, these two companies are leveraging the strengths of 150 bamboo-related businesses. R&D is also our focus and priority. We have developed technologies to uh, breed high yielding bamboos, including bamboo number one, which has a yield of six tons for every move of land. And Sichuan Huanong, a local company, worked together with the Finnish National Technology Research Center and, um, and uh, other in research institutes, and they have received patents on bamboo processing techniques. Uh, and also these patents, these inventions, have been commercialized. Policy support is, of course, a very key aspect uh, with regard to human resource development, financial support. The government has supplied funding to uh, invest in these very important aspects. And uh, these policies are showing very good results, enabling one million bamboo farmers to achieve a uh, revenue of uh, 10 billion RMB. Inbar and the International Center of Bamboos and Rattans are a very really important platform for us to access partners. Since uh, the establishment, we already have developed a very good and a close relationship with Inbar. In 2002, we had a joint training center on bamboo articrafts with Inbar. And in 2009, we worked with the International Center of Bamboo and Rattans to develop online training programs, uh, supporting more than 20,000 Chinese and international bamboo-related workers to access training. And also, we organized joint events and conferences in 2000. 16, with the Yinbar, we co-organized the Nice China Bamboo Culture Festival. And uh, we also later organized together the Bamboo Expo. And also we jointly built the Bamboo Pavilion as part of the Beijing uh, World Horticulture Exhibition. And Branding is something we pay a lot of attention to. We work with Hermes in developing uh, vases with bamboo. And we also work with Starbucks and uh, DreamWorks and uh, Carrefour and Metro, this international multinational, multinational companies. And we also have uh, signed agreements with bamboo farmers promising the minimum amount we are going to buy from them uh, so they can produce to order. So these farmers can have a secure order and they can also enjoy the technical support we give them they have a stable price and they have a ready market. And also the companies enjoy a st stable supply of uh, raw, raw materials. And the bamboo farmers have become workers. Uh, and as you can also uh, learn about the bamboo weaving techniques and many uh, centers citizens and people with disabilities are now making a very good living with their techniques. And in our county, we have developed the rural tourism and 
So with more visitors, the farmers, they took the initiative to further retrofit uh, their housing and they also sold a lot of handicrafts made of bamboos to the local visitors and thus enhanced their local income and forced the joint stock partnership. So the enterprises, the private capital and uh, the owners, they worked together and shaped a kind of a new model to increase their income so the annual disposable income increased by more than 3,500 RMB. Leaders, distinguished guests, the experience of Qingsheng County shows that um, the local government can be locality specific and realize high quality development. So the local ecology will be good and the local people can enjoy a better living situation. And this year, the China, so, so Chinese news program at the prime time had a special coverage on the achievements that we have made. The Meishan in Sichuan has been locality specific and uh, try to improve the local people's income um, by developing the fire, um, fireflies and you can see um, there are so many fireflies and it is so beautiful and I have never seen that in spring we can see so many beautiful fireflies and I think fireflies to me are something that I can only see in tales but here I can see there are so many fireflies and they are so beautiful and there are so many of them because of the very good local um, environment so fireflies is very sensitive to local environment. And so uh, in Qingsheng County, um, it has planted a lot of the bamboo forests. And with that, um, it had, there are a lot of uh, fireflies. And so the Qingsheng County has also invited a lot of ex experts on fireflies in order to provide the better uh, situation and environment for that. And we have identified more than 40 um, special bases for fireflies. I see there are so many fireflies there. Also, we have identified a lot of rare species locally. In 2025, Qingsheng County held the first Firefly Festival, and in about three months, it has attracted more than 90,000 visitors, and it has created a value of more than 90 billion RMB. And in the future, Qingsheng County will build fire, a fire, uh, fly, Firefly Museum to have more channels for the local farmers to increase their income. We will um, try to protect the local environment better and to attract more visitors to here so that we can develop our local economy at the same time we can also enjoy very good local ecology so this is uh, my presentation today i welcome all your comments so Qingshan county welcome you thank you thank you thank you very much for your presentation deputy mayor of Qingsheng County, Mrs. Wan, Wan Hongyin. Uh, well, I have the fortune to have visited your county uh, in Meishan. And uh, yes, I, I have witnessed myself the development of the bamboo industry in, in that region. And I congratulate you for the efforts you have uh, made and the development that had been happening there. So thank you very much for sharing with us the latest updates on this. Um, with that, we have to go very quickly to the roundtable discussion, which I uh, beg all the panelists to be very concise and brief because we are running out of time. Uh, I will go to our first uh, panelist in the round table, uh, Mr. Rashid Amui. Uh, we've just heard about the four innovation cases of bamboo development. I understand that UNCTAD had a newly issued the report of commodities, uh, the commodities at a glance 
and the special issue on bamboo, which uh, Mr. Yutotus uh, was mentioning at the opening remarks. Imbar and a number of bamboo experts have joined the discussion on, on recent developments, challenges, and opportunities in the commodity markets. Could you please kindly share the main gains in the report and the meeting? Are there any recommendations made on future actions to, to be taken to promote bamboo commodities and development? And if so, what uh, platforms and policy is UNCTAD, in UNCTAD are available to support such actions? Mr. Rashid, uh, you have two, three minutes. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Two, three minutes is quite uh, um, challenging to uh, give you a concise. Um, apologies, apologies for that. Yeah, but I'll, I'll try. Anyway, um, I, I've, I've really enjoyed the presentation from uh, the panelists and uh, I thank uh, Imba for organizing this invite, this event and inviting Angtad to participate. Um, at Angtad, bamboo is one of several commodities that we study. Um, at as per our mandate, we provide analysis on, com on commodities and assist developing countries at the policy level to help them benefit from participation in international trade, strengthen development gains from their commodity economy, and address the trade and development challenges of commodity dependence. We also facilitate consensus building and offer technical, direct technical assistance to the developing countries, helping them to build the capacities they need to become equitably integrated into the global economy and improve the well being of their populations. Yes, we did um, publish uh, a commodity of the clan series on, uh, on bamboo early this year. And um, the publication was basically to analyze the physical and mechanical properties of bamboo uh, to assess the environmental and socioeconomic impacts and discuss applications of bamboo and trade opportunities. The report found out, found that there are some species of bamboo that have strength properties in tension, compression, and bending that are comparable to the traditional building materials that we use like steel, uh, concrete, and wood. And some of them even surpassed the strength of these building materials. The report also highlighted the environmental benefits of bamboo, employment uh, opportunities generated by bamboo, um, and creating down, downstream industries. However, the report also noted that because of lack of awareness, knowledge, skills, and investment, the bamboo sector is not well developed in many developing, um, developing countries with abundant bamboo resources. In this regard, the report uh, pointed out that attracting quality invest, uh, investment and forming strategic partnerships could contribute to alleviating the challenges faced by resource owners in developing their, um, their bamboo sector. Therefore, policymakers um, should create the right environment for developing downstream industries where necessary with financial incentives. The report also encouraged the development of codes of practice to provide practical guidance on the use of bamboo, um, as this is crucial in promoting awareness and uh, using bamboo in different, um, different applications, specifically in the construction industry. Finally, the report urged policymakers to include uh, bamboo in national housing policies, as it could contribute to meeting target 11.1 of UN Sustainable Development Goal 11. That is ensure access for all to adequate, safe, and affordable housing and basic services and upgrading slums by 2030. At UNCTAD, we have two main platforms where issues related to bamboo, um, to commodities in general, are discussed. First, we have our annual multi-year extra meeting, which provides a platform for multi-stakeholder dialogue and cooperation, and for facilitating an exchange of experience, views, and lessons learned between policymakers, academia, non-governmental organizations, and the private sector. Second, we have the Global Commodities Forum, which is a biannual event that also provides a platform for multi-stakeholder di uh, meeting uh, dialogue to discuss and find pragmatic solutions to perennial problems of the commodity economy. The forum is the public platform to debate critical issues at the intersection of commodities and development. We also have our Anchored website, which is an online platform, which helps to dis disseminate 
um, knowledge to uh, those who are interested in knowing more about commodities in general. And now we've added Bangu to our work program. So we have that as well. At the 2022 multi-year extra meeting, our meeting on bamboo made the following recommendations. First, we need to map species of bamboo according to growing conditions to help in effective reafforestation in areas where there's little precipitation. It also urged to conduct more research on bamboo to identify species that provide good feedstock to downstream industries. It, it, it acts um, it, it, to establish downstream industries. Um, it, was, it was recommended that first, especially for those who have the resources, but really haven't yet gotten to build adding value to their, um, their resources and looking towards that, to focus on the lower end of value added products, to build skills before diversify into the higher end finished products like we have in countries like China. Um, we also need to align bamboo end products production with market demand. Finally, it, it, it urged to develop standards to fa facilitate widespread use of bamboo and called on, um, on, on IMBA to provide guidance in this uh, regard. So I've tried to be very, very brief. Um, this is all I have to say <laughs> for now. Is that at this point, I hope the interpreters uh, also uh, wasn't, uh, were not put under too much pressure, but that's the way we have got to deal with it. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it, Rashid. Thank you, thank you so very much. I take five points from you. Very important, enabling frameworks, incentives, species matching, market and production, linking both, and standards development. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I'll go to our next uh, question to Ms. Yang Xu Yang. Ms. Yang Xu Yang is joining us online. Uh, Huan Yin. Yeah, I would like to ask you, how do we use modern information technologies to promote bamboo and rattan industrial development? Mrs. Yang, you have the floor. I think it is should be Mr. Yang from UNIDO. Um, yes, thank you, uh, moderator, for your question. I think from my observation, I would like uh, just to save the time, I would like to skip uh, those um, strengths of the case, but I think two co additional comments from my side. Um, one is about, uh, particularly for the industrial development point of view, as we know, bamboo is uh, one of the low, uh, carbon material which have a good poten potential on the climate change mitigation and adaption. So if we can could monitoring the carbon footprinter in a technical way through your currently bamboo application or development, to understand more on its law of the CO2 reduction as a key indicator in your cases, which will be very helpful to understand how it helped the, the case. And another point is that uh, the bamboo is to supporting the local economic development. And with this uh, carbon reduction from this nature-based material and how it could be linked with climate change and mitigation and adaption in your local region as a key driver for future sustainable development. And uh, I think it will also help facilitate the bamboo product trade in the international market. So this is uh, two comments from my side. And talking about, uh, I think you may have uh, something about some um, question about unit. I think unit have three ones. We can leverage it to these uh, bamboo industrial developments. As a special uh, as a special agency in your agency, I think we have three strategic priorities. One is creating shared pros prosperity for the uh, poverty reduction, and the second is advancing economic competitiveness for inclusive economic growth, and the third one is safeguarding the environmental for sustainability. So basically, I think three elements you may think about to how to leverage and uh, into the bamboo industrial development. One is one unit. We establish a unit called agro-industry and bioeconomic unit, which promote the development of innovative approach to agro and agro-industrial production by looking at the new products for industry, which is I think, including the bamboo. So this unit will contribute to address the global challenge. 
such as climate change, food and water storage. So a lot of uh, I mean, technology resource you can rely on. Second is one program. So one program is called resource efficient and cleaner production. We shortly, we call it RECP. It will provide a continuous application of environmental strategy to process product service to increase the efficiency and reduce the risk to the human and environmental. So last but not least is one platform um, we call the learning and knowledge development facility. It is a global platform focusing on the manufacturing skill development and armies and to establish in partnership with global manufacturing companies and the training academic academies to um, to the operation and also maintenance of equipment for different uh, industry sectors. So it will going to expand access of the young as well use to the job um, creation, also the demand driven skill in the sectors of uh, logistic and uh, industry man maintenance. So I think these three ones uh, will maybe help uh, supporting the um, um, bamboo industrial development in national, regional, and global levels. Thank you very much. And I will give the floor back to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yang Hing Yang uh, from uh, UNIDO. I think we had a small confusion because I was calling for another speaker, but it doesn't matter. We uh, take your points. Thank you very much for, for sharing the, the developments within the agro-industrial unit of UNIDO and also for accepting to participate in this panel. Uh, I, I want to go to our next spe speaker, Ms. Yang Xu Yang, the Secretary General of China Society of Bamboo Industry. Uh, and uh, I want to uh, uh, ask her about uh, how do we use modern information technologies to promote bamboo and rattan in the uh, industrial development? Thank you. Uh, thank you, moderator. Uh, dear panelists, I would like to thank Inbar for giving me this opportunity to participate in this panel discussion about the opportunities faced by China's uh, bamboo and rotten industry. I think there are the following key issues. First, the central party and the government are very much committed to this industry. President Xi Jinping in 2018 visited Sichuan province and he said that Sichuan is a major bamboo producing province. It needs to play with its advantage and uh, access its resources of bamboo. And in 2019 at the China-Africa Cooperation Forum, when speaking at the high level forum in a, a keynote speech, President Xi Jinping specifically mentioned the importance of developing the bamboo and rotten industry. And also, uh, President Xi Jinping this year in Nepal hosted the Global Development Conference and he proposed China's measures for that purpose. One of the outcomes of that conference was an uh, initiative to replace plastic with bamboos as a response to climate change. And also NAPGA, the National um, Forestry and Grassland Administration, and the NDRC uh, issued policy papers on developing the bamboo and rat industry. And in September this year, the China Bamboo Industry Association issued a blueprint up to 2030, outlining the visions for bamboo industry development. And the second enabling factor is that the local governments are very supportive of all these initiatives. Zhejiang, Jiangxi, Sichuan, and other provinces uh, and counties, which are major bamboo producing regions, have come up with local policy papers specifying the local initiatives and support for this industry. And thirdly, there are lots of technology advancements. Uh, this is very impressive. 
uh, over 135 research and awards have been awarded to researchers in the bamboo sector. Uh, many new institutions are emerging and we have breeded new bamboo varieties and bamboos are also being developed for many new products. Uh, a number of new research institutes on bamboo will be uh, launched. China's bamboo industry faces these opportunities and challenges. Uh, the challenges are, uh, well, not uh, fully utilizing the bamboo resources. The management expertise is still quite low. Only 25% of the bamboo varieties are utilized. The majority remain untapped. Lots of bamboo plantations are very inefficient. Only 30% of the bamboo plantations are intensified, in, intensively managed. And infrastructure is quite uh, lacking in hindering the transportation of a bamboo harvested. And also the harvesting of bamboos uh, is plagued by the lack of proper equipment and machinery. And it's very much still a manual process. And the bamboo industry uh, also uh, is not really so sophisticated in launching new products. Uh, it's still the same old stuff for the most part. And the quality uh, sometimes is not uh, coherent. There is no uh, recognized uh, certification for testing. And there is no uh, information system uh, enabling access to relevant information. All these are challenges we are faced with. These are opportunities, these are challenges, but there are also opportunities. We are confident that we can overcome these challenges and um, over and address and resolve all these issues. Um, the suggestions are uh, the international community becoming more concerned about climate change, the environmental degradation. Uh, this is an opportunity for the bamboo and wrap industry. Bamboo products can be used in uh, construction, transportation, decoration, and chemistry. Uh, as China implements uh, the BRI initiative, uh, the countries involved are also becoming more aware of the potential of the bamboo industry and the experiences we have already developed in China can be of use to other countries. We can uh, collaborate with other countries in terms of people exchange and technology transfer and equipment uh, supplying. I think uh, for us to develop the bamboo industry, we need policies, we need human resources. The national government needs to make enabling policies. The industry associations and the ministries need to set standards and the research institutions need to conduct R&D to support the businesses and the businesses need to uh, practice modern management. I believe with uh, policies, human resources and technologies in place, the bamboo industry is going to enjoy a very good future. China is work willing to work with you for that end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your for your remarks. Indeed, uh, sustainable bamboo management uh, is important, and sometimes, yeah, uh, transportation, harvesting, and equipment and machinery is one of the challenges we often face. Thanks for sharing that with us. Uh, I would like to go to uh, uh, our next uh, panelist. Mr. Juan Fa Chiang, the Deputy Director General of the Department of Science and Technology of uh, the National Forestry and Grassland Administration of China. I'd like to ask him, China has rich bamboo resources and the largest uh, bamboo industry in the world. 
the trade value of bamboo products of China exceeded 300 billion Chinese yuan. Could you give us a brief review of the main practices and experiences of China in the past four decades in developing the bamboo industry, including policies, scientific and development practices? And what are the roles of the bamboo sector in forestry, the certification control and wildlife protection? Thank you. Thank you, moderator. I would like to thank this parallel session for giving me this opportunity to participate in the panel discussion. Uh, so the moderator asked me to share with you China's experiences in the last 40 years um, developing its bamboo industry. Uh, China indeed has rich experiences that can be shared uh, in terms of policy, in terms of technology, in terms of uh, business models. First, on um, policies, the Chinese government is highly committed to the bamboo industry. President Xi Jinping uh, for two times sent letters congratulating on the anniversaries of Yinbar, the 20th and 25th anniversary. And China has established uh, the National Bamboo Industry Association, as well as um, research institutes. And at the top level, uh, the government issued many uh, policy papers. For example, the 2013 policy paper highlighted uh, the importance of planning on developing the bamboo industry and also policy support uh, funds and subsidies have been uh, provided to support this industry. Next on technologies, technology innovation is always a key aspect in developing the industry, including the production and uh, selection of the varieties the protection of new varieties and also developing techniques for accessing and processing bamboos, uh, new materials, new equipment, new machinery. Uh, a lot of investment has been made, for example, for the hairy bamboos genetic mapping. It's the first in the world. And also outer space uh, breeding of uh, bamboo varieties in the outer space. Uh, these are our initiatives at the technological front. We are also actively developing technical standards for bamboos, including product uh, standards and uh, service standards. Also branding is something we pay a lot of attention to. And uh, the business model is very diverse. Uh, some local governments see bamboo as a strategic priority, they have uh, built bamboo parks. And lots of governments at a local level organized uh, training workshops with the farmers. They sent technical officers to the local areas to support the technical upgrade. And some local regions organize cultural events centering around bamboos, like a bamboo poem recitation sessions. So it's become a full economy, including the primary, secondary, and tertiary sectors. And also the business model is very diverse. You have uh, businesses working together with the farmers using, using the produce to order model for bamboo production. And there is also the use of the internet in the bamboo industry, what we call internet plus bamboo. So bamboo uh, is really becoming part and parcel of every aspect of our life. It's playing ro important roles in carbon sequestration and revenue generation. As we develop future policies, I think there are the following key considerations. First, we need to uh, 
have uh, important considerations in roots. Uh, just now the Columbia speaker so mentioned roots, how they are doing uh, a business raising to educate consumers on eating bamboo shoots. Uh, carbon sequestration. The, the bamboo industry shall, shall play a better role in carbon sequestration. And thirdly, we shall make the bamboo industry stronger and bigger. And fourthly, we shall have the bamboos to replace wood or trees. And, third, and also fourthly, to develop the bamboo culture. China has a very rich bamboo culture and we need to further enrich that. And we, we hope that um, we will further promote the bamboo culture. But indeed, we need this border from the national policy to increase the input from the national government and to strengthen scientific innovation and to have the standard to play a leading role. And we shall offer better quality product and also to uh, achieve high quality development of the bamboo industry. I think um, to promote the action of substituting um, bamboo for plastics, I, I think the national policy, the suitable policies shall be in place in order to achieve that. So these are uh, some of our experiences in, in that. Thank you very much, moderator. for uh, your inputs. Indeed, technology development is key and accessing and processing the mammoth resources. You have provided some examples, some good examples in Ibin, in Anji, in Qingsheng County. And the role, uh, has emphasized the role of bamboo for carbon sequestration, the need to expand the industry and the bamboo culture. Thank you very much for, for those recommendations. Uh, with that, I will go to our last, uh, our last uh, panelists of the roundtable discussion. Uh, professor Wang Kan Lian, he is professor of Renmin uh, Business School at the Renmin University of China and director of the Center for Metaverse Research. I'd like to ask him uh, the same. Uh, how do we use modern information technologies to promote bamboo and rattan industrial development? I think it's very important to also hear from a academic, uh, the academic perspective on this question. Thank you. Uh,谢谢主持人,谢谢,呃,主持人大会,呃,给我这次这个学习的机会。啊,各位领导,各位专家,大家下午好。啊,我想,就围绕这个主持人提的这个问题啊,谈三,三点想法。第一个呢,就
so so I, I want to quote their uh, key words, that is uh, the lack of the consensus of the consumers and the marketing is not there. The consumers are not having a strong awareness of the bamboo products. So these are the key words of these literatures that I have accessed. I am a professor uh, of the Renmin Business School. I am an outsider of the bamboo industry. Uh, but from my perspective, after listening all the presentations today, and I uh, want to come up with uh, two points to share with you. Uh, first of all, probably you know about the industry from within it itself, but how about the social exposure? And we shall do more to disseminate the function and the potential of the bamboo industry. And I also believe that uh, bamboo uh, bamboo resources is a kind of a crop in the agriculture sector for so many years in the past it had played a very important role in the uh, uh, in the agriculture sector and it is more used in the rural areas and it is not yet better integrated with the modern world i think this is uh, the uh, one of the problems that we are faced with, I think, marketing or publicity or increasing people's awareness. These are something that we shall urgently do. Secondly, how to um, substitute bamboo for plastics? We need to do more publicity on that. In addition to the official media, we shall strengthen our publicity. We need to have a more systematic design and to promote the publicity step by step so the general public can know more about the bamboos so that the bamboo and the rotten products can be um, better integrated with the modern society. For example, we shall let the kids to know more and we shall need uh, to have the general public to know more about the bamboos so that they can use more bamboo and the rotten products in their life. For example, how to tap the digital technology to deepen the publicity for substituting bamboo for plastics. I have five suggestions to share with you. First, whether or not we can establish a knowledge portal for substituting bamboo for plastics. So the relevant history, trade, life, products, uh, we need to establish a portal like the Wikipedia. So um, we can post the questions and answers on different aspects of the bamboo. And I think a knowledge portal shall be established to further publicize the knowledge about bamboo. And secondly, online platform. So, so we have a lot of offline small commodity market like EU, but maybe online we can also develop a trading platform of the bamboo products and for and thirdly social media. So we have the Asina blog and on the um, also WeChat group. I have searched uh, that there are not a lot of WeChat group accounts, especially focusing on bamboo. So a social media can play a very important role. We shall have that to better disseminate the knowledge about the bamboos. And we can develop some kind of videos um, demonstrating how to make better use of the bamboo materials and to put them on the WeChat account. Also, some of the success, some of the successful experiences can also be delivered in classrooms. Um, not a long ago, I heard a case and there was a company in Zhuhai and this company used the wood and the bamboos to replace um, the door card. You know, a lot of the door cards are usually made of plastics, but this company is developing the wooden card or the bamboo card in order to replace the plastic door card and with that their revenue increased from 60 million rmb to more than 200 million rmb so this is a case then a specific case but how about the credit cards you know there are so many credit cards in people's hands and i have checked the data we have more than 800 million pieces of credit cards 
also we also attend different meetings and we know there are so many different plastic cars so we can make better use of the bamboos to produce the plastic cars also um, in china we have different contests the business contest and different kind of contest i also hope that we can make a better use of the contest to, to disseminate the knowledge about uh, the bamboo uh, for example uh, uh, we can we, we can offer the online platform um, to attract more young people to be engaged in the bamboo industry uh, with the contest to let them to design more bamboo products. And next, I talked about just now. I talked about uh, the knowledge portal and different kind of uh, 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 methods. But how shall we reach the very um, the very end? How how can we reach the end customers? So we, we hope that we shall reach the, for example, the SR terminal. For so uh, so we we can also uh, we have a lot of the beautiful pictures on the bamboos. For example, if I, I turn on the computer, there are some really beautiful pictures, uh, and um, uh, as the background and the screen protecting pictures. Uh, on the computer, on the mobile phone. Maybe we can push more uh, bamboo pictures to serve that function so that the people can better understand the uh, beauty of bamboo. And also, uh, just now, one of the speaker talked about the tourism, making use of the bamboo resources, and also the bamboo-based games. So at the same time, we shall also try to think how can we have the young people to be engaged in the development of the bamboo industry? That is also important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Wang Kanlian. I take so many takeaways from your uh, from your uh, remarks. I, I think uh, awareness raising is key, is crucial, as you mentioned in all these uh, uh, areas, uh, youth, social media, digital use making use of digital technologies uh, also doing more marketing to expose uh, more people to the use of bamboo and rattan and of course uh, imbar should be the wikipedia of bamboo i fully agree with that uh, i think imbar should also play uh, uh, a role to enhance awareness raising of all the tools that we already have in Imbar, in Imbar website, as a Wikipedia of bamboo, we are the Wikipedia of bamboo indeed. So we should also make use of the resources because they are there not to be there uh, just sleeping. They have to be used by people, no? And uh, therefore we have to make use of, of them and uh, show to people that we have made a lot of uh, uh, advancements uh, that are there for people to be used and for people to enhance the research, innovate, and uh, practice it. No, so thank you very much. I I don't have more time to go into all uh, the takeaways of this, but we are gonna have a part two immediately. So I want to invite all of you to join us in the part two, which will be moderated by my colleague Oliver Clement. So uh, thank you very much to all our panelists. Also, I want to thank to all the organizers. Uh, I don't want to forget anyone, the uh, National For Forestry and Grassland Innovation Alliances on Bambon Rattan Industry, the China Bambon Rattan Brand Cluster, uh, the International Center for Bambu and Rattan, and uh, ourselves. Thank you very much all for your uh, work and for cooperating for this magnific magnificent session. Thank you all the panelists and all the speakers. Thank you. Uh, apologies for starting our second part of the session a bit behind the schedule. Uh, the first part was enlightening, but believe me, uh, would you not want to miss on the second part as well? Uh, I would like to remind the participants that this session has a simultaneous interpretation options Please uh, choose your preferred language. Uh, ladies and gents, 
Greetings from Inba Secretariat in Beijing. I hope that you are having a wonderful day or night whenever, wherever you are on the globe. Warm welcome to the second part of the International Seminar on Bamboo and Rattan Clusters for Regional Development and Green Transition. We are particularly going to share different views about bridging key gaps in bamboo and rattan technology, skills, knowledge, developing markets, as well as advancing trade. We are aiming at uh, promoting dialogue between bamboo entrepreneurs, international green finance setups, trade and carbon neutralization institutes, and explore the best practical models for cooperation in industry, markets, and trade. My name is Olivier Clement Gatwaza. I'm the program officer at INBA, and I'm really excited to be moderating the second part of the session. During this two hour long session, we have two main points on our agenda. We first have three presentations from three esteemed speakers, followed by the panel discussion with six distinguished panelists. Uh, we are going to pack a lot of insights into these two programs, but before that, let me introduce our illustrious speakers and panelists. We are joined virtually by Dr. Jun Chunchuan, head of the Nature Initiative China at World Economic Forum Beijing Representative Office. Uh, second is Dr. Su Zhu Yun, Deputy Director General, Department of Development and Reform, National Forestry and Grassland Administration. Third, Professor Chen Yongjun, Distinguished Professor and President of the Institute of Greater Bay Area Dual Circulation Development, Guangdong University of Finance and Economics. Fourth, Professor Xie Yi, Associate uh, professor, uh, book professor, School of Economic and Management, Beijing Forestry University. Professor Fan Hong, professor and doctoral uh, supervisor at the School of Journalism and Communication, Tsinghua University. Six, uh, Dr. Jiang Jingyan, director of Yong'an Institute of Bamboo Industry, EB. And seven, Professor Wang Tiejun, Chief of Sino-European International Research Center for Creative Economy. And on site, uh, on my left, Ms. Lilan, Director of Industrial Development of the International Center for Bamboo and Rattan, ICBR. And on my right, Professor Xiao Wenfa, Vice President of the Chinese Academy of Forestry. Thank you all for your participation. Now comes the time for the three presentations. Many of you, dear participants, are so enthusiastic, enthusiastic about. The first presentation is going to be delivered by Ms. Li Lan, Director of Industrial Development of the International Center for Bamboo and Rattan ICBR. She's going to take the example of China bamboo and rattan brand cluster as example to tell us more about bamboo sector development and the main experiences of bamboo and rattan sector capacity building. Please, Ms. Lilan, the floor is all yours. Ladies and gentlemen, dear scholars, dear officials, good afternoon. It's my great pleasure to have this opportunity to share with you the current status of the bamboo sector in China and uh, the consortium of the industry, the academia. First, an overview about the bamboo industry's current status. Actually, this has been eloquently mentioned by speakers in previous sessions. Here, I would like to add a little bit. China has 837 bamboo species that are found in more than 18 Chinese provinces. And uh, China is leading the world in terms of the scale of its bamboo industry and its uh, 
technical expertise following the annual data and statistics collected by the National Forestry and Grass Administration, the bamboo sector has been growing in value over year over year. Uh, it's, uh, the world economy has been affected profoundly by the pandemic. However, the bamboo industry still enjoys robust growth. In 2020, the value was uh, 319.9 billion, up 10.9 percent compared with 2019. So that means in China, the bamboo sector is still very promising, enjoying very broad uh, spectrum of growth. However, compared with other sectors in China, the bamboo sector is still underdeveloped. The vast resources of bamboo are not fully utilized. The bamboo sector on the whole is not so competitive. There are the following challenges. First, uneven regional development. Secondly, lack of coordination. And thirdly, the businesses tend to be small and they tend to produce the same products. And fourthly, they don't have a strong brand and they don't realize the importance of having a strong brand. In terms of the first challenge, the uneven de development across the provinces, the bamboo sector is most developed in the coastal provinces. For the hinterland provinces, even though they have large bamboo forests, they don't have a fully developed industry and uh, their resources have not been commercialized. Uh, for Zhejiang and Guangxi as two examples, uh, Zhejiang province, East Coastal province, uh, bamboo sector's value, commercial value is seven times of that of Guangxi. Even though these two provinces have similar bamboo forest reserves, so this shows that the Zhejiang and Guangxi provinces are not even in their development. However, we are delighted to see that Guangxi is catching up. This also points to the huge potential. And the second challenge is that uh, the industry is not fully developed. The industry is primary, it's for the most part, the primary industry, the second industry, the tertiary industry, as part of the bamboo sector are not as developed as a primary industry. Uh, there is a very low uh, representation of the tertiary industry, such as uh, bamboo culture, bamboo ecotourism, bamboo creative uh, economy, bamboo e-commerce. These have been mentioned by the previous speakers. They talked about how they are developing bamboo-based ecotourism and uh, cultural products. And thirdly, uh, the bamboo companies in China tend to be quite small and the products they turn out are similar or even identical. It, they are small family businesses, very small in size compared with other industries. So they are not so competitive. And sometimes we see very uh, vicious competition making the whole sector less competitive. And fourthly, lack of awareness about the importance of branding. Here, an example, you see uh, the bamboo lanterns. Uh, most of the Chinese companies producing such lanterns don't have their own brands. They produce the products, but the foreign brands put their brand on them. So uh, the price can be very different. On the left, you see bamboo lanterns sold on Taobao, a very famous e-commerce platform without a strong brand. So it, it's only 50 RMB together with uh, light bulbs, but at IKEA, the lantern uh, looks similar, but it sells for 220. 30 RMB without the light bubble. So it's three or four times more expensive than the product without a strong brand. So uh, in response to these challenges, 
the International Bamboo and Rattan Center takes in, took the initiative to develop two initiatives. One is the first one is the brand brand cluster for China bamboo and rattan. In 2009, in 2018, in September, uh, with the support of uh, the National Forestry and Grassland Administration and the China Council for Brand Development, ICBR took the initiative to launch the cluster with the first group of members being 35 uh, uh, large companies with uh, recognitions and awards uh they are quite large they are from the construction sector sector uh energy sector paper making sector and bamboo processing um bamboo beverages the cluster uh, follows the following four priorities next the other initiative is the national uh innovation Alliance for the bamboo and rattan rattan industry. It's funded with the support of the National Forestry and Grass in the, uh, Administration. So far, we have forty-two members, including one NGOs, four research institutes, six colleges, and the others are companies. Uh, the Alliance has charters of association and a governance structure with the board and also uh, an advisory committee and a secretariat. Since the establishment, the Alliance has vigorously built the Bamboo and Rattan Science and Technology Innovation System, promoting industry university research uh, integration and for the alliance and for the cluster, they have overlapping membership. And they have achieved the following success. And first, in terms of uh, joint innovation, first, sharing we IP. We share the IP and uh, we share the intellectual property rights and jointly working on innovative projects. We carry out industrial cooperation with government and enterprises, and we play an active part in formulating the industry standard. This is for collaborative innovation. And for industrial development, we promote the formulation of industry policies, help cutting edge technologies and get support at the level of national ministries, promotes the publicity of industry wide papers and consulting reports and recommending new technologies and in terms of the talent cultivation and together with the local government and enterprises we establish research institutes together to solve the technical problems that this industry may be faced with and nurture the com 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 composite talents and we also um, established promotion and transformation basis of science and technology concerning the bamboo and rattan sectors. So we try to get uh, the financial support from the national government and to the bamboo and the rattan industry for the translation of the research results and to attract more talents. I think a very successful uh, platform uh, shall also further improve its management and after so many years the construction and development of the industry university research platforms uh, had six stages first one mobilizing and planning secondly investigation analysis set third setting goals and the fifth fourthly strategy making and a strategy implementing and monitoring and evaluation so um this is the brief introduction of the alliance and also the brand cluster. So um, the um, 
alliance and the brand cluster will further try to meet the demands of for the members and in terms of the top level design public service communication and, and cooperation in different areas we uh, try to pull up the advantages of this industry and to promote the innovation and sustainability of the bamboo industry this is my share of today thank you very much a wonderful presentation indeed uh, china is the leading producer of bamboo products as well as the leading nation in many other aspects of bamboo sector hence indeed an inspiration to the rest of the world uh, as a takeaway from uh, lilan's presentation uh, she said about imbalance development among different regions so china also had to deal with that uh, reducing the gap uh, because there was imbalance development among different regions. So uh, it's a model for the rest of the world. Uh, the next speaker is Dr. Zhu Chunchuan, uh, head of the Nature Initiative China at World Economic Forum, Beijing representative office. Uh, Dr. Zhu Chunchuan, please over to you. Thank you, Oliver, for your introduction. I'm so honored and happy to be invited to attend our meeting. I'm from the World Economic Forum. I want to share with you the presentation of the risks of nature loss and opportunities of the nature positive economic transitions. I have listened carefully to the previous speakers and I felt very optimistic for our sector. The rattan and bamboo industry is closely related to the livelihood of the farmers. It is also an important economic driver. Right here, I want to share with you what we can do for the economic transitions. Beyond that, I also want to share with you all the basics to grow your business. As we all know that, Nature crisis has been faced by all of the countries and regions in the world. In light of the time, I'm not going to share with you all the data, but I want to choose a couple of them for your reference. Each year, we are losing 10 million hectares of the forest on a yearly basis. This is an area about the same size of the Portugal. Also annually, a million animal and plant species are at the risk of this extinction. Some may happen in the coming decades. It is also the same case in China. Apart from that, over the last five decades, around 96% of the wildlife populations plummet since 1917. Those are the horrible data. Over the last several years, the World Economic Forum has consecutively released reports on that topic. And we are playing down the risk level. We can have a closer look at this diagram from 2020, from years ago to 2020, we are seeing the negative implications over the nature loss. Also in 2020, this was the first time the top five nature risks come from the same category, nature. In 2021 and 2022, climate change, extreme weather, as well as the loss of a biodiversity and ecosystem breakdown have become the most possible risks. The international Intergovernmental Panel on the Loss of the Biodiversity pointed out, we are seeing a thousand times less of the biodiversity compared to centuries ago. As a result, we can safely conclude the loss of the biodiversity has become one of the major hazards to grow the economy. If we are looking back and reflect on the progress we have made before, I want to share with you the 2010 CBD COP10. In the entire world, we are having 20 
overall objectives, among which none of them have been completed and only six of them get partial achievement. Around 10% of the objectives have been partially achieved. Over 90% of the targets have failed. Generally speaking, we are facing a tragic future. And this December, we would launch the COPE 15 BBF Forum in Canada, followed by the 2021 Kunming COPE 15 5. 15, I believe that this will be a great opportunity for us to strive forward. In October of 2021, President Xi Jinping presided over the UN CBD COP15, pointing out the biodiversity has invigorated the earth and it is also the basis for humans to move ahead. We're also going to plan for the 2022, the Earth Biodiversity Protection Framework. This is not only economic valid, but also socially strong. To actively address the climate change and promote the goal of the net zero emission. A number of international institutions have jointly proposed a global goal for nature positive. Starting from 2020, it is estimated that the nature loss should be cut to zero. In the certain year of the nearby future, we're going to see a reversed point. Around 2013, the 10th year of accomplishing the biodiversity nature, we want to move ahead and do something positively for the 2022 target. In the upcoming years, we want to achieve the target of the harmonious relations between human and nature. That is something we are going to achieve in the upcoming years, and it is based on theorems. The question lies how we are going to materialize of those actions and translate our promises into actions. To achieve this target, I want to break it down and turn it into targets, industry by industry. Over the last few years, we are also doing some overview work. We are carrying out the analysis of the risks, the action plan, and we carried out a nation-specific report on China. The World Economic Forum back in 2021, January, reported an article on the uplifted risk of the nature. All industries have exerted negative impact on nature or drive up the risks from direct or indirect associations. In the entire world, over half of the generated GDP has been closely related to the nature loss. This is a bigger picture for the entire world, and we want to have a closer look at how China is playing out. China is having nearly two thirds of the total GDP at the risk due to the biodiversity and nature loss, such as uh, agriculture, fishing, food, forestry industries, those are relying very much on the strengths of the biodiversity and will be at a severe risk due to the loss. The next is about the transportation, the supply chains followed by energies, the public infrastructures. In, I'm going to quickly escape this slide. According to our analysis, the food, agriculture, as well as the maritime industries, the industry's environment, as well as energy exploration and extraction, those three major segments will threat will threaten over twenty seven percent of the species. Right now, a million white plant and animal species are threatened. If we could help the 27% of species to move into green transition, we could substantially slow down the worsening of the biodiversity. To help to address this question, I believe that bamboo and rattan will play the bigger role. Altogether, it is estimated that we are having 79% of these potentials to be achieved. By 2030, it is regarded, we could safely 
create over 1.01 billion USD opportunities as well as 395 million job opportunities. If we could successfully achieve the 15 transformations from the six major economic and social systems. In China, specifically, we could successfully add 1.9 trillion USD in the annual business opportunities and create over 88 million resilient jobs by 2030. All these results are purely based on the theory, theoretical model I have presented. In China, the food, land, and ocean use systems could create over 565 million USD of annual business value and 34 million jobs by 2030. For instance, we could strengthen the sustainable forest management to create a sustainable consumption model. We have six major targets. To achieve the final objective of a successful transformation, the first is we could uh, improve the ecosystem restoration and avoid the land use expansion. To be more specific, we could limit our efforts to harm the natural land. At present, half of the residential areas and lands are being used for the agricultural purposes. And for each year, around 100,000 square meters of the forest can also be converted into the forest. In the marine time system, we're also seeing the increasing level of the waste and pollutants. Generally speaking, the question is boiling down to achieve the efficient agriculture to reduce the land use. The next target is to achieve the productive and the regenerative agriculture that will help us to reduce the energy consumption of the water, of the coal, as well as it is also highly correlated to the protection of the endangered species. Followed by the third objective of uh, building a healthy and productive ocean. This is going to be dealing with the uh, agricultural landscape by combining the traditional farming practices with the agri-tech tech. The next day is about to strengthen the sustainability of the forest, bamboo, and Raton will play its role. For instance, we could create more jobs, sustainable products. We have a lot of things to go. The fifth is about the planet-compatible diets. We do recommend sustainable consumptions with a strong responsibility. I want to cut in a few words about the bamboo, which can be applied in the buildings and we could achieve the compact buildings, save the polluting building materials, save the land, and to ensure long-term sustainability. And for the nature beneficiary, footprint can be increased. I do recommend all of us to explore these opportunities. Nature will be regarded as our future infrastructure to delve into more of the nature-specific solutions. The next is about the energy and extractive industry transformation. I also wish to see one day that the bamboo and radon could be well utilized. Also, we are going to tap the potentials into more sectors. But I'm going to run it out of my time. I want to be more concise and efficient. The In order to achieve all those targets, international cooperation is a must. And policy recommendations, the financing tools, all these are necessary for us to achieve the final targets. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, Dr. Jun Chunchuan for the impeccable presentation. We've now come to the third uh, presentation, which is also our last one uh, before the round table 
discussion. During the third presentation, Professor Xiao Wenfa, Vice President of Chinese Academy of Forestry, is going to bring us to the understanding of forest carbon sink, promoting carbon neutrality. Uh, Professor Xiao Wenfa, you've got the floor to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the, the topic is about the bamboo and the routine, but I'm just uh, doing some research on the forest ecology and some uh, issues is concerns about the carbon sink. So I just, uh, in order to express my ideas uh, well, so I just uh, make my speak in Chinese. 我给大家汇报的题目就是关于森林碳汇和碳中和的 so I'm going to talk about uh, carbon sequestration and the carbon neutrality. Uh, some of my views to share with you, I will be very brief. Uh, several aspects. Ten thousand years ago, our you know our civilization is a carbon-based civilization. Ten thousand years ago, uh, uh, things were okay. So in the last ten thousand years, uh, things were pretty okay, but uh, it began to change. In the last three hundred years, we have tormented the earth so much. From the perspective of eco, eco, ecological systems, we have changed the carbon circulation on the earth. In the last 300 years, the human beings are just going crazy with carbon consumption. And this leads to climate change, threatening the fundamental survive survival of the human race. So now we are uh, struggling with uh, mitigation and adaptation. We want to uh, adapt ourselves to the new climate the model. This adaptation applies to our way of life and our economy and our industries. This is our challenge. You know that since 1992, since the United Nations Conference on the Environment and Development, uh, the adoption of the United Nations Framework Commission on Climate Change, followed by the Tokyo Protocol and the Sustainable Development Goals, as well as the Paris Accord. All these were initiatives that humanity has taken to respond to the climate change, trying to limit the range of uh, temperature rise to a desirable range. So it's basically between 1.5 Celsius degrees to two degrees. So we are now going all the way to reduce carbon emission for the purpose of limiting the PPM of CO2 in the atmosphere to less than 414.2. But now this seems basically impossible. But China in the last 25 years, great progress has been made. This has been recognized by the international community. From the 15th, uh, National Congress of the Communist Party up to the recently concluded 20th National Congress of the Chinese Communist Party. We see the evolution of the vision in China to achieve ecological civilization, advocating for the harmony between human beings and nature. China also has committed itself to carbon peaking by 2030 and carbon neutral by 2060. 
Secondly, on carbon neutral and a carbon sink, any people who have anything to do with forestry have to address carbon neutrality and carbon sink. From past up to now, we have emitted so much CO2 into the air. What's our goal with carbon neutrality from the perspective of ecological systems? We want to uh, limit the carbon emission to a level that is tolerable to the natural world, to our atmosphere. So we can allow some CO2 to remain in the air, but it should not be too much. It should be within a tolerable level so that human beings have an opportunity to adapt. We know forestry plays very important roles in mitigating climate change. In the Tokyo Protocol regarding uh, the restoration and protection of forests, and also in IPCC's report, the chapters on the contributions by forests. All these are very clear about the importance of forestry. From 1750 to 2019, in the last 300 years, we have emitted 685 billion tons globally, 35% of that was a result of deforestation. However, about 33.6% of the carbon emitted was absorbed by our forests. According to FAO, the global forests have stored about 44% of the carbon uh, in the form of forest biomass. And the forest soil accounts for 45% of the carbon stored. And about uh, 260 million to 810 million tons of uh, emission is caused by deforestation. In China, uh, since the 1980s, China's forest area and carbon storage in forests have been increasing continuously. Uh, the contribution of forest area increased to China's forest carbon sink has reached 40 to 50%. In 2014, the change of forest biomass carbon storage was 0.152 pgc a year. Based on the documents, from 1999 to 2018, carbon storage in the forest ecosystem is about 208 TGC. That's 10, uh, 20 times. 20 is the power. 10, the 20 is the power. And we also have biomass, dead organic matters, Soil organic carbon is are the forest ecosystem as carbon storage. Also that we have forest products that can store carbon. However, going forward, this ratio is going to be lowered. Uh, between 2050 to 2050, it's going to come down to 249 TGC. Thirdly, how do we calculate the carbon sinks? A very important concept is that we are, uh, now we are using IG MBP, GBP to do the calculation. But according to IPCC, uh, the proper measurement should be MBP. Otherwise, we are going to overestimate the carbon sink we have. And also the calculation for China must respect the definitions provided for in China's forest law. 
Otherwise, uh, it will not be accepted in the national reports. And forests are the source of emission, but they are also the sink of carbon. In Europe, uh, maybe the Europe's carbon sink can be reduced by 20%. So, um, so um, this is uh, uh, something that we need to further study. And we not only are using better methodologies at the same currently, we are doing our research based on forest inventory. We are using the method of a forest inventory and developing countries are using models um, based on the remote sensing satellite. And China is improving very fast. And this year we have um, the remote sensing satellite to monitor the carbon on surface. And in order to make it to be more scientific, we are building the national and the sectoral standard. We will uh, standardize the technical terms and also the monitoring methods, as well as the trade related with carbon sink. At the same time, it also includes and how to increase carbon sink. We are trying to develop development standards in all these areas. And fourthly, I would like to talk about carbon neutrality and carbon trading. This is a very hot issue so far. One thing that I would like to stress is that according to Paris Agreement, this international agreement, we are using the man-made carbon sink to offset the man-made emission. So we cannot use the, the natural carbon sink to offset the man-made emissions. And secondly, in the process of a carbon sink, we also need to follow the principle of actuality. Not all the carbon sink can be traded. So for one project, the so the carbon sink produced within the project can be traded, but according to the international market price, according to Japan, the international carbon price can be uh, 5 billion, uh, 3, uh, 3 billion to 5 billion US dollars. And probably uh, all across the world, maybe the overall value can be 100 billion US dollars. So, the um, carbon trade is also a topic in the COP um, meeting of the UN. And we need to develop a new kind of a mechanism to determine um, the baseline and also verification project, the registration, and um, also uh, uh, the the cells, etc., and all these are in the process of the international negotiation. At the same time, we have also forest certification. It is a new market-based tool. It has dramatically promoted the sustainability of the forest industry. And uh, uh, of course, here, um, it may covers the, the bamboo forest certification and industrialization of the bamboo in industry, China's CFCC and PFCC. Uh, so we need to have the mutual recognition system in more than 57 countries. So this certification has been recognized. And uh, in the future, in order to increase the carbon sink, we need um, to expand the size of the forest that protect the existing forest size and improve um, the forest structure. We needed to have the recycling um, 
method methodology to further extend the life cycle of the forest and to develop the substitutes and also the biofuel, etc. And in terms of industrialization, we're also faced with the challenges. We need to better understand our overall situation. We need to understand the overall process of the wood and bamboo industry. And for the whole process, we need to monitor and verify the carbon footprint. And in this process, we shall also select the grain and processing chain which is eco-friendly to um, build a grain industrial chain, the grain supply chain and grain factories in order to uh, promote the development of the bamboo industry. And some discussions on several basic scientific issues. For example, an eco forest the ecosystem is carbon neutral or carbon sink and a carbon source. We know that the forest carbon sink uh, is having the time scale and for the forest resources, its age and the life cycle of carbon sink. For the trees that grow fast are not necessarily generating the high carbon sink as we expect and also in China, we hope that we can have some high carbon sequestrating tree species. I think there are some technical difficulties. And at the same time, um, different tree species may have a different carbon sequestration effect. And we also need to look at the carbon sink, carbon sequestration mechanism of different tree species as a developing, as a big developing country. Oh, we shall also make a better use of the resources and we need to develop the recycling economy at the same time. While we make use of the resources, we need to realize the balance of the ecosystem. And uh, we have to be prudent in developing bio energy by making use of the wood and bamboo resources. At the same time, China is having a very severe task in eco restoration. And, uh, we are also faced with very complicated the carbon dosage study or research. At the same time, we shall also recognize that carbon sink is just the one part of the overall ecology. We have to be uh, looking at the other areas more. And I would like to thank the organizer for your invitation. I think maybe in the future, we will have a great progress in the future in carbon sink, but carbon sink is just one part of the eco service and a value. It is necessary for us to study that, but we have to be prudent. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you all. Uh, thank you all for the present, all the presenters, uh, for your wonderful presentations. All right, now comes another part you've equally been waiting for: roundtable discussion. It's hard to talk about bamboo and rattan sector development without an active collaboration between various actors involved at every stage of bamboo and rattan supply chain. If we take an example, entrepreneurs in bamboo and rattan sector have a key role to play, but they need to be supported by a good policy framework, have an easy access to funding, they need a lot of inputs from research institutions. They need skilled labor from vocational and technical education. 
they need a clear understanding of the market, just to mention a few. As it was articulated by the first speaker, Ms. Lilan, uh, uh, many people, including me, hope to have somebody uh, explain to them how cap capacity building can be used to bridge key gaps in bamboo and rattan technology trade and project investment. We have an amazing panel to do just that. I'm thrilled to be able to introduce them one by one as they show up. Uh, I start by uh, Professor Chen Yongjin, uh, Professor Xie Yi, then Professor Fan Hong, uh, Professor Wang uh, Tiejun, and Dr. Jiang Jingyang. Uh, we have to sincerely apologize. We, had, we have had the wish to have Dr. Su Zuyun, uh, Deputy Director General, Department of Development and Reform, National Forestry and Grassland Administration, but couldn't be able to join us for very uh, realistic uh, reasons. Uh, warm welcome to our distinguished panels, uh, panelists. Uh, now we go to the questions. My first question, we go directly to Professor Chen Yongjin. Uh, we understand that academic institutions, industries and entrepreneurs are at the forefront of innovation, bamboo product diversification and bamboo explosive popularity. Uh, what kind of homework do you leave for other stakeholders in the bamboo sector to boost creativity. So good afternoon, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, I'm asking what kind of homework do you leave for other stakeholders in bamboo sector? Creativity and search for innovative uses that can help the global community achieve sustainable development. Uh, Professor Chen Yongjin, over to you. It is a great pleasure for me to attend today's meeting, and I have learned a lot from the conference today. I uh, live in Zhejiang. It is very famous home of bamboo, so I'm very familiar with bamboo. As to the bamboo industry, I think there are a lot of things to do. As time is short, I would like to share with you three uh, suggestions. And first of all, after listening to the presentation for the whole day, I realized the utilization and the development of the bamboo industry shall be better integrated with the BRI. Not a single speaker or entrepreneur has mentioned the BRI. I really hope that um, the uh, National Forestry and Grassland Innovation Alliance on Bamboo and Rattan Industry and also the brand cluster shall also consider how shall the bamboo industry be well integrated with um, the BRI. So now the 20th CBC National Congress is saying that we need to further promote the BRI and I think uh, uh, we needed to make the BRI into a healthy uh, BRI, uh, 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 peaceful BRI, and also uh, uh, a BRI which can help to reduce poverty. And I think all these are related with our bamboo industry. With the bamboo industry, we can help the local people to be green, to be health, to be healthy, and to um, to to see the peace better, and also to reduce the local poverty. So this is a micro kind of a suggestion that is we uh, our design uh, shall be better integrated with the national policy. I worked in Xiamen University and uh, Professor and uh, President Xi when he worked in Fujian province has had the stressed um, uh, 
the forestry and grassland. So forestry and grassland can be the industry for us to offer our assistance and help to the developing countries. So for our foreign assistance project, we shall um, think how can we make better use of the bamboos and the grassland um, to uh, help better help to local people in the BRI countries. So how can we use uh, bamboos to replace the existing materials? I'm very much uh, inspired by the presentations in which speakers mentioned the use of bamboos in cooling towers at the power plants. I used to work in a power plant and I really appreciate that. I think we need to align our industry development with BRI, the Road and Belt Initiative. And secondly, there needs to be national plan on the industrial development for bamboos and rattans. The current strategies, current policies are sort of um, fragmented. For Anji County in Zhejiang province, for Ninda County in Guangxi province, they each have their own strategies. I think there needs to be overall a national perspective. There needs to be a more holistic integration of these, these various policies across China, focusing on issues like human resource development and marketing capabilities. And thirdly, uh, we need to have a focus and a priority. I think this is reflected in the theme of the Congress, which is the substitution of plastic by bamboos. Uh, like people used to, or housewives used to carry a uh, bamboo baskets when they go shopping. It's very cheap, but now they are all using plastic bags. Some of the so-called new plastic bags, uh, people claim that they are environmentally friendly they are biodegradable, but I don't think so. I, I think that these plastic bags, if they are degradable, they are only degradable to a certain extent. There must be incentives for people to stop using plastic bags and shift to bamboo alternatives like bamboo shopping basket. Uh, please let's come back to your thoughts. Uh, if we have time at the end of this session, okay, uh, okay, okay. I just I want to make sure we hear from uh, all of the panelists. I immediately go to Professor CAE uh, for uh, due to, to time constraints. Uh, uh, to Professor CAE, uh, he is an economist, and I would like to ask uh, the following. Question. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Professor Xie Yi, I would ask, uh, as an economist, what are the features of bamboo financing and what the financing agencies should do to cater to the specific needs of the bamboo sector development. What do you think, uh, what do you perceive should be the contribution of other stakeholders in promoting green financing for bamboo sector development? Uh, Professor Xie Yi, over to you. Thank you, uh, moderator. I want to thank Inbar for giving me this opportunity 
I would like to uh, say it's really broad because for the bamboo industry, its financing is indeed a very broad matter covering primary sector, the secondary sector, and the third tertiary sector, tourism, uh, bamboo plantation, bamboo growing, bamboo product making, and tourism. And secondly, uh, China's uh, bamboo resources are of high quality. And also it's good investment to put money in the bamboo industry. It's less risky and the return is pretty fast. For some of the emerging sectors of the bamboo industry, the investment return is very high and very fast. Uh, uh, some of the uh, financial instruments, financial products uh, and funds are being issued covering the bamboo industry, meeting the interests of interested investors who want to invest in the bamboo industry. And also another characteristic of the financing of the bamboo industry is it's huge. Uh, by 2025, the sector is going to be 700 billion RMB. Now it's around 300 billion RMB. So we need to have a double digit growth in order to achieve the goal. That means there is a lot of potential. However, the challenge is the cost of funding is pretty high. Uh, because these are small businesses, it's quite costly for financial institutions, for, for banks to lend to the small businesses because bamboo industries businesses are very small in size. However, we are trying to address that. And secondly, financing is a critical condition for the bamboo industry to grow and develop. So, uh, I think the fundamental reason is that uh, it offers good investment return. I encourage financial institutions, banks to look at the financial industry. At least they are fulfilling their corporate social responsibility by lending to the bamboo industry, uh, supplying them with a uh, cheaper capital to uh, give a great boost to the development of the industry contributing to carbon neutrality. Uh, and for Professor Chen Yongjun from China Limited University, he mentioned the emerging bamboo business models using bamboos uh, to replace a lot of conventional products. Uh, the banks have lots of outlets. So they have lots of offices, lots of office workers. They need to use lots of tissue, paper napkins. So uh, we can actually use that as an opportunity to highlight the bamboo alternatives we can try to sell the bamboo napkins to the banks and they will be able to appreciate how much value this product offers and they are going to be more inclined to lend to bamboo industry players. So far, uh, I don't think green finance is fully developed for the finance, for the bamboo industry. So I think we need to uh, do more awareness raising. Of course, people uh, are all okay with One last point. 
uh, I think uh, there needs to be greater innovation with bamboo products, uh, meeting market demands, consumer demands. If that can be done, I don't think there is any problem for the bamboo businesses to borrow money from banks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Xie. Uh, now I would go, I would want to ask Professor Fan Hong, uh, uh, could you please uh, use a couple of minutes to explain how uh, Bamboo and Rattan Industries built up rural brand image, uh, use just like one or two examples to explain that uh, you are in uh, communication and uh, you would uh, give us an idea, a good idea on that. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm really happy to attend this uh, session. I think this event is very important to China given China's bamboo industry development and the BRI initiative. My focus is on the national image and original image as well as uh, mass communication. I will just speak about a few points because we don't have enough time. I think bamboos are typically a Chinese cultural representation. China has four plants or that are of ancient traditions representing traditional virtues. Bamboo is one of the four. The bamboos are the plants carry very important cultural values reflecting the Chinese spirit. So I think we need to tap into that cultural assets, especially focusing on the affinity between bamboos and the Chinese culture, the Chinese national identity. I don't think this is fully uh, amplified in the current branding strategy. And secondly, the moderator mentioned that uh, I need to present some cases. Uh, so I will try to share with you some cases. I studied the city images. Uh, how cities in China are developing their images. I have found that in some provinces, including Fujian province and Sichuan province. For, for me, I'm from Sichuan province. In the south of Sichuan, not far from uh, Chengdu city, uh, there is a place called Chongzhou. They are referred to as the hometown of bamboos. So I grew up in that area. I personally felt how much contribution bamboos were making to the local economy. For example, as a child, I drank uh, hot water from thermos packaged in rattans. And the furniture we used when I was a child at my home was all made of bamboos. Now people use uh, plastic stuff, but when I was young, it's a lot of natural stuff. Uh, but now these values are sort of severed from people's day-to-day -day life. But there is a tendency to revitalize the cultural traditions. Now bamboo culture, bamboo products enjoy increasing popularity. I don't have time to give you specific examples. And thirdly, I want to uh, talk about uh, several points that we need to pay attention to on developing the bamboo industry. Uh, the big challenge, of course, is low brand awareness. So the industry association needs to highlight the products of bamboos. P people use bamboos in their day-to-day -day life, but they don't even realize it. Uh, of course, we have some businesses that are doing well with their brands, but still lots remains to be done. I have several suggestions. I will just read them out first. I suggest 
uh, brand building. Uh, they can work together with other brands or they can develop their own brands. And uh, develop a bamboo based tourism. We um, shall develop the tourism uh, tourism, for example, um, to promote um, the consumption of uh, the bamboo shoots and also um, to promote uh, the cultural uh, culture of uh, the bamboos. I think we can fully leverage on different resources like museum and different cultures. We shall also make better use of the internet or the social media. From TikTok, I have seen a, a lot of old people, the old people in rural areas, uh, they demonstrate um, their uh, bundle weaved products and they sell their products to different people via the social media of TikTok. And I think this is a very good way, actually. And the last point is that for the bamboo products, if they are to be back to our daily life and to be a part of our childhood, we need to have the awareness and to have the bamboos to replace other raw materials. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Fang Hong. Uh, time is indeed not an uh, ally. Um, it's a pity that I have to uh, interrupt uh, many of your uh, thoughts. Uh, we have uh, only uh, three minutes, and we still have uh, two speakers, uh, two panelists. Uh, Jiang Jingyan. Uh, we would like to ask you a question. Uh, I bring um, a slightly modified revision of uh, this same question I have asked to uh, Professor Chen. Uh, we understand that entrepreneurs are the forefront are at the forefront of innovation. Uh, bamboo product uh, diversification and bamboo's explosive popularity. Your company itself stands as a pioneer in bamboo manufacturing uh, of certain innovative, innovative products for many years now. From the policy and financing point of view, uh, could you please give us a picture of what is uh, most needed for the development of healthy, sustainable bamboo sector? Please, uh, over to you. It is a great honor for me to attend the panel discussion today. Uh, I would like to share with you several uh, points. And uh, one of the examples that I would like to share with you is from a county city in uh, Fujian province. And uh, uh, for, for this uh, county city, it is located in the south of China. It is a Yongan city. This is also a pilot for the reform and opening up of China. In Yongan city, in the past 10 years, we have done a lot to promote the bamboo industry. And based on that experience, we have some points to share with you for local government, including the leaders, government officials, or financial institutions. Uh, we need to uh, let them to visit the cases, the um, the advanced ex examples, because for the top leaders, sometimes they shift their position very frequently. So first of all, we need them to understand the most advanced or the best practice. Um, um, so I think for the investors, we what we fear the most is Maybe today you are supposed supportive to the bamboo industry, but tomorrow you shift to other areas like the electrons. So this is something that the investors fear the most. For the Yong'an city, we developed an industrial constitution. That is um, the industrial plan. That is, we developed the top level design for the bamboo industry. We have also developed the blueprint 
and the development of the pathway for the bamboo industry. And we uh, went to the greater details like the spatial um, design, uh, for example, uh, the spatial design for this town and for that village, etc. And for the bamboo industry, they have to do two things. First of all, to establish comprehensive and uh, competitive uh, cluster based industrial ecology, rather than I, when I try to buy something, I have to go to Guangdong. And if I want to buy some glues, we'll have to go to the United States. Uh, we, we don't want that. Also, at the same time, we also need to develop the featured industry. For example, Sunny Yong'an area in Fujian. It is a, a leader. It is one of the leaders for the um, bamboo space solutions. For example, if you want to um, develop a five-star hotel, and currently um, Yong'an can offer the uh, best solution with very low cost and fast speed, etc. And fourthly, you shall also uh, have hands on both the resources and the market, especially for finance. For uh, Yong'an, we have the finance in four major priorities. The first one is government uh, finance. Every year for Fujian province, so we uh, there is uh, the 100 million RMB of the finance, a physical support from the government. Secondly, the policy banks loans, like the policy development bank, and we shall make a better use of the loans from these banks because their interest rate is very low. And thirdly, to establish industrial fund. For some uh, local government, maybe the size of the industrial fund is not very big, but it is a signal showing that the local government strongly supports the bamboo industry to have it as our priority. And uh, fourthly, social capital. For example, we cooperated with local companies, uh, with listed um, companies, and uh, we try to attract uh, the social capital um, to be engaged in the bamboo industry. We shall also uh, explore the market for Yong'an City for 10 years already. We have already held the Bamboo Furniture Expo. This is not something that we just enjoy by ourselves. We are not just uh, inviting the designers, the purchasers, and, and the owners. We, we invite everybody to attend that expo. And uh, so we, uh, for our institute, we serve uh, the economy. Okay. Sorry, uh, I'll be able to yes, yes. Professor Wang. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm already done, thank you. Uh, panelists, uh, could you please give your thoughts on local features, featured bamboo industry development uh, and relative financing models? Uh, from the point of view of creative economics. Uh, Professor Wang Tiejin, you are uh, also uh, an economist, uh, so this uh, question, I think, uh, fits your background. Thank you. Over to you. Uh, good afternoon, moderator. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to answer the questions raised by the moderator. Creative economy apparently comes from the aspiration of the people or creative ideas with different kind of production to uh, create the, to produce the product and um, to generate the trade and create social value. I think creative ideas is the key for the development of people so for people we govern the earth because we have the creative ideas for other animals like elephants or tigers no matter how big they are they do not have the creative ideas so humans we have the ideas therefore we can govern the earth and we can promote the economy with creative ideas we can have disruptive innovation and we can create a new business of the bamboo industry. As time is short, I cannot go into details. I want to say 
that we we can substitute bamboo for plastics and develop the local featured industry to substitute bamboo for plastics. This is something supported by the Chinese national government. This is an initiative from the government. This is also recognized by the international community. Substituting bamboo for plastics can help to protect the environment, reduce carbon, and to achieve the sustainable development. At the same time, for the global bamboo industry, this is a hard-won opportunity. This is a very rare opportunity. In the past, the bamboo industry just developed in the natural cycle, but currently, this is supported by the Chinese government and in bar. So this is a great opportunity. Bamboo, what kind of plastics it can substitute? Plastic products, there are so many plastic products. So from the creative economy, let's think about that. For example, home appliance, TV sets, and also um, the um, external uh, 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 plastics for the uh, computers, for the mouse, for the toys, for refrigerators, etc. And like Lego building blocks, we know the Lego building blocks are so popular among the kids. And the Legos can be very expensive, but it can be as high as 1000 RMB. But we, we can uh, replace the plastics with bamboos to and produce Lego toys. Lego is popular all across the world. If we can make bamboo Legos, then this value will be huge in the world and the development potential will be huge. Now I would like to, how to translate this in initiative into actions. Um, I believe that we need the policy support from different countries. We need the scientific innovation. We need the um, system guarantee. And in order to build this system, the economic system, now I would like to share with you my thoughts from the creative economy perspective. I have three suggestions to share with you. First of all, to substitute the bamboo for plastics. We can and shape on the local featured industrial clusters. So uh, we needed to build the grain recycled bamboo industry. What is that? For example, the bamboos after being made into different products that there are a lot of uh, uh, evens and odds, uh, but, but we, we shall make better use of the wastes and make them into a further product and they can be further used. And so uh, in my research, I, I produced uh, the bamboo alcoholic drinks and the distilled grains from that can be made into the nutrients for mushrooms. And also the bamboos also can be burned. And, I, and after that, that can also be uh, made into the fertilizers that it can be used for um, the plants and so the, the burnt bamboo products can be returned to the earth once again. So this is the whole recycling economy. So for the bamboo industry, we have the primary tertiary, secondary and tertiary um, aspects and we need to integrate all these different aspects. And secondly, we needed to have the embar as center and establish a uh, in one minute. Okay, one minute. The bamboo industry chain shall be better integrated and develop the recycling economy. And thirdly, we need to establish international bamboo industry blockchain service platform to be the carrier for the green bamboo industry. So different bamboo products all across the world can be demonstrated and sold on this platform. And the and I hope we can make it into the Amazon and Alibaba or Taobao.com. And I think 
the bamboo industry is so huge all across the world. More than 140 countries uh, have uh, proposed the efforts to substitute the bamboo uh, to uh, further reduce the, the utilization of uh, the plastics. So the blockchain for uh, the bamboo industry have been uh, developed by me, but I will not go into details as time is short. Several seconds, then finally, as to investment and financing, I think China's financing environment is very good. Now, um, to substitute bamboo for plastics, so this is a very good economic opportunity. This is unprecedented opportunity for in international investment or domestic investment. This is a very good opportunity. At this moment, we are initiating the Bamboo for the Plastic Initiative in front of such a big economic target. The bamboo industry is in a very good position to attract a large scale of the funds and capital. In light of the time, I'm going to stop right here with the full recommendations. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much to all of the panelists. Uh, we are approaching uh, to the, the end of this uh, second part of the session. Uh, before concluding the session, I'm glad to call upon my colleague uh, Jinwei to announce the recommended actions. Uh, please, Jinwei, uh, you have the floor. Participants, I have the honor to be able to, uh, to, be able to uh, release the actionable recommendations um, uh, together with Ms. Lilan, uh, our partner. The following are from the uh, <coughs> recommendations. Thanks to the inputs from UNIDO, uh, UNCTAD, and WEF. Uh, I will be brief. Uh, the text are going to be sent to you uh, later. Uh, we are going to release the full text. So the first action re, uh, re, uh, recommendation is create platforms to facilitate exchange and cooperation on uh, job creation and uh, downstream industry development and value addition. The second is build up capacities of industry actors. And the third is facilitate bamboo and rattan cluster development and the formation of innovative bamboo and rattan production value chains. And the fourth is to foster an enabling environment for bamboo industries. And the fifth is to focus attention on the clustering effects of bamboo and rattan in nature positive transition, and particularly regarding the significant role of bamboo and rattan uh, in fulfilling the bamboo as a substitute for plastic initiative, which has been jointly launched by China and INBAR under the Global Development Initiative. So thank you very much. This is the, our release uh, of the recommended actions. The full text are going to be released to you later. Thank you. Now I would like to call upon uh, Professor Yin Gang, Gang Chiang uh, to come forward and conclude uh, the session. Uh, I would like to call upon uh, Professor Yang Gang Chiang to conclude uh, the session. Uh, Professor Yin Gang Chiang, uh, over to you. Thank you very much for the remarks from the moderator, distinguished guests, delegates, experts, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. The sideline session on the topic of International Symposium on Bamboo and Rattan for the regional development and green transformation is coming to a successful conclusion. 
On behalf of the National Center for the Bamboo and Rattan, I would like to encourage you, congratulate you on the success of this conference, as well as all the results we have achieved. I also like to express my heartfelt thanks to Mr. Jose, the Charge d'Affaires of the Colombia Embassy in China, and Mr. To say the first council of the permanent mission of the Cameroon on the United States, thank you for their support. And I also want to thank all the friends, our partners from all walks of life who care about and support the cause of the wood bamboo and radon. My thanks also goes to all the friends and the media partners. At the opening ceremony of yesterday, we were very honored to receive the congratulatory letter from the Chinese President Xi Jinping for the 25th anniversary of the founding of the National ne Network of the Bamboo Radon, as well as the Second World Conference on the Bamboo Radon. We also received the video messages from the President of Ecuador, Ethiopia, Cameroon, and, the, and four international organizations of the UN system. We are also launching the initiative as well as inviting experts presentations on the sideline, we're also having a dialogue between the diplomats. This afternoon, our seminar also brought together UN officials, government officials from the bamboo and rattan sector. We are having the virtual and physical conferences to discuss about the best practices, capacity building, forest carbon sinks, green financing, and et cetera. At the panel discussion, all the experts and professionals shared with us their business models, finance strategies, investment, management models. They had a round of uh, productive discussions. All these activities fully demonstrated the great potentials and the value of the bamboo and the rattan in the field of increasing the income and the wealth I believe that all the fruits and the products have been, get, have been gathered together in the final release of the actions. I believe that we are going to inject a new momentum into the sustainable development of the world bamboo and rattan business. It is a successful, pragmatic, and relevant meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, as a national research institute directly serving the intergovernmental organization headquartered in China, the INBAR will follow the spirit of the Chinese National Congress of the Communist Party of China in accordance with the decisions made by the 20th Central Congress on promoting green growth, ecological civilization, and we are going to promote the harmonious coexistence between man and nature. Again, we will fully absorb the contents of this conference and, as always, strongly support the work of the INBAR and make more achievements for the Bamboo and the Rattan Ministries to promote regional growth and green transformation. Last but not least, I wish all the guests and delegates a good day. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for attending. Uh, see you next time.